Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, Data here, and welcome back to our live franchise mode series with the San Francisco Starfleet on NHL 24, episode number 18, headed into the 2028 draft and offseason. After three consecutive trips to the Stanley Cup final in just three, Three, uh, you know, years three, four, and five of our franchise's history, it's now time to take a step back headed into this offseason and prepare ourselves for the next generation. Dice, welcome to the stream already, buddy. Thanks for the title help as well. Mila, welcome aboard. We'll get started. If you're watching after you've already gone live, we'll get started around the five minute mark. So you can go ahead and jump to there. But if you're watching live, joining us live for this evening's stream, we'll just start welcoming everybody in. And I thank you for your patience and for being here with us this evening. Caleb, welcome to the stream. This is officially the first doggy, let's go. This is officially the first stream, and although I've already recorded the Canucks episode, I guess this is the first content that you're hearing of me sitting on the brand new chair. It is a game changer, ladies and gentlemen, the captain's chair. Thanks to everyone who's contributed for it, especially Doggy and Dice, who contributed to the chair. It is a game changer, I'll tell you that. For all the hours that I do here, it is uh, very nice enough to have a folding chair. Yes, I will in the Canucks episode, or even in the Discord as well, I'll definitely show uh, pictures of the old chair and the new chair. But it's a nice... Uh, it's not. I wouldn't call it a gaming chair. It's more. I want to use it for more things than that. So it's more, I call it a... Um, Perfect, Dan. Perfect. Whenever you catch up, let us know. Thanks for stopping by and saying so. Uh, it's more of like a desktop chair, I guess you could call it, but like good cushion. It has um, it has a good uh, rock to it. I can rock back to like 120 degrees. Has armrests that go up and down. So I, I call it like a high-end desktop chair, office chair, but that's more of what I was looking for. That's like with the lumbar support and all that. That's more of what I wanted than just pure gaming chair. I want to use it for a few different things, but most notable, most importantly for um for uh streaming give me a second here while i just get all the usual things going i didn't i took a few a few seconds to talk about it here but without uh setting up the description and the, and the thumbnail here yeah i will definitely show pictures on the discord so you know what i'll even do it tonight pictures tonight on the discord server discord exclusive pictures on this on the server for the chair and if you're watching after the fact it'll be i'll have pictures on the, um, in the, in Saturday's Vancouver Canucks episode, I'll have a picture there. So I just recorded the Canucks off season last night and this afternoon, and now we're doing the off season here with San Francisco. So it's a lot of off season. <clears throat> there we go. Cam, rest in peace, Captain Squeaks. All he wanted was some WD-40. <laughs> All right, Sam is perfect then. So what you got to do is wait for the Saturday video, the Saturday upload of the, of the Vancouver Canucks franchise mode. I'll include pictures there. No, you will see it. You will see it. Just check out the, the video on Saturday. I'll, I'll include pictures there. Because I mentioned in the episode that, hey, I'm finally on the chair. Okay, last couple things as always. Thumbnail, link, tweet, all that good stuff. The bot takes a long time on the Discord, I find. There are so many different permutations of ways we can go this offseason. It is incredible. The different ways that we could split our lineup heading into next year. We're not moving into a rebuild. We're not, moving in, we're not doing what we've done before, where we've made it far, but now it's time to tear it down to look towards the future. No, not at all. Just that we're trying to figure out who of the expiring pieces aren't coming back. What are we trying to do to make sure this team stays strong, whether it be in the short term or the long term? There's a few different things that we're looking at, and it's a unique type of offseason. We've made it to three consecutive Stanley Cup finals. We are in, you know, in years three, four, and five of our franchise's history. So we want to stay strong, but it is important to take a step back and say we want to be as strong as possible headed into the next generation. Okay, there we go. Life is good. <laughs> Cam, buddy, love it. <clears throat> I don't know if I love. I don't know if I love that. I gotta be care. I gotta be honest, but I love the. Um, I love the dedication. <clears throat> Thank you. Finals in years three, four. I have too many. Uh, there we go. Tweet is out. What do you think about the cap going up every year in franchise mode? No, it goes up way too much. Way too much. DRK, welcome to the stream. It goes up way, way, way too much. Like, just in Vancouver, we're in 2028 or 2029. The salary cap's 100 million. So although the salary cap's been going up, and it's going to take a big jump this year in the real world, it's not going to be at uh, another 15 million within five years. I'd be shocked if the salary cap in the NHL is at 100 million plus within five, within the decade even. After it's been, like, barely from 79 to 81 to 83. I'd be, you know, getting into the 90s would be hard enough, I think, over the next few years. 
It's balanced out by the fact that, and that's it. And then because of that, then the players ask too much. So it does balance out. That's true. But I think the players only ask so much because of the cap going up as well. I think it, the, the player demands are usually relative to the salary cap. That's the thing. So, ladies and gentlemen, here we go, 2028 draft and offseason. After last episode on Saturday, it's a bit of a short time frame between the episodes, we had a run to the Stanley Cup Final. It was our fourth, uh, third consecutive appearance in the Stanley Cup Final. Our first time in year number three, we lost in six games to the Islanders. Our second time in year number four, we beat the Bruins in five to win our first Stanley Cup in franchise history. And our third time in a row last year in year number five, we got swept out by the New Jersey Devils. It was the first time in franchise history that we lost a series in less than six games. We never even lost a series in five. We've always lost in six or seven. And the Devils beat us in a four-game sweep. So that was very disappointing. Well, to lose is very disappointing, but it was great to have made it as far as we did. Really, we were carried by our veterans. We had Crosby. We had Pavelski. We really got carried by our veterans. Um... There we go. And now headed into the off season, we got to consider who's coming back, who's a part of this team in the longer term, and what are we going to do to try and make the team even stronger where we can. Artemi Panarin, he's been our guy. We signed him to a two-year deal in free agency. 82 points, 92 points. Con Smythe last year, 35 and 24 last year in the playoffs, 24 and 21 this year. I'd love to bring Artemi Panarin back on a one-year contract, but... I don't know if he's going to go down to top six potential, maybe it might be costly and that regression might get us by the time next season starts. Fiala, Lindholm, McIntyre, all locks. Fabian Lysel, this guy, he's stuck at an 80, he was stuck at an 82, he's up to an 83 now. John, welcome to the stream. But he continues to produce as if he's like an 85, 86. We've been talking a lot about trading Fabian Lysel, but the thing is, if Lysel was doing what he's doing, but in what was like an 85 overall, I think we'd be, we'd have a lot longer of a leash for him. 37, 47, 52 points. This year in the playoffs, 14 and 21. Lysel's been performing. So we got to consider him though. But because he's Swedish and our restriction on this series that we can't have a player, uh, more than one player of the same nationality on the same line. If Lysel's going to play in the top nine and Otto Stenberg's in the top nine and Elias Lindholm's in the top nine, that means Lysel's at least playing on the second line. And that's a little scary as an 85, 83 overall, but he continues to prove himself. Cole Hudson, he definitely showed up finally after having a tough year, kind of 35 points, negative 11. He had, what, 13 points in the postseason. Max out veterans coach might extend his play span as a lead from another year. True. That's true. You're not wrong. Theoretically, you're exactly right, Soundless Tech. But the thing is, Narf, welcome to the stream. The thing is, I don't want to change our head coach because we've had incredible success ever since we brought him in. We were like 500 at the halfway point of year number four. And since we brought him in, we won a Stanley Cup and then tied our franchise record for most wins in a season. So theoretic theoretically, you're right about the veterans coach, though. Cole Perfetti was a bit disappointing. 10 points, negative six. Guliev looked good, nine points. Gerard, oh, so, oh, so said, yeah. I'm not sure if it has as much of an impact, but we could look at that. Sam Gerard, nine points, negative nine. Definitely a candidate for a trade this offseason. He's an original San Francisco Starfleet member. Um, no, Cole Hudson's not getting true. Oh, doggy, what are you saying? Cole Hudson just had his rookie season. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hold on a second. He's an 86 overall after his rookie season. Now, Sam Gerard, he's an original Starfleet member since he came in. Year number one, 80 points, then down to 58. Then back up to 70, then down to 54. This past season, his plus minus was great at plus 26, but... You know, and, and he did improve to 59 points, but it is true that he didn't get back to the 70s or 80s. Is that an okay thing? Maybe. So we are thinking about a top four defenseman. Yeah, we did say Girard out last stream. We did say Girard out possibly. We're looking for a top four defenseman, but I don't want to force a move that's not there. If there's no better top four defenseman that could be acquired via a trade or free agency, I'm not going to force it for a guy who's an 85. If Girard's a consistent 87 overall getting 50 plus points, yes, he's been disappointed. But yeah, that's yeah, that huge turnover. That's true. My anger has subsided, but it should come back. That's true. That turnover he had in overtime. Oh man, last in the postseason in the, the playoffs last year, last episode. That's true. So if there's a nice move, I think Gerard is definitely a candidate to move. But I don't want to force it if it's not there. As angry as we are, maybe we put him on the second pair, demote him. I don't know. I don't know. We'll see what happens. Owen Beck, eight points. He's probably a candidate to move as well. We love Owen Beck, Bizu Bizu. We got him technically as an original Starfleet member. We traded for him right away once we had acquired, who was it? Philip Gustafson from the Wild. We traded him to the Canadians. 
So 80 points in the AHL, jumped straight to the NHL, 20, 25, 23 points, but he's never really grown. He's been kind of locked into that bottom six. He's been good. He's had his clutch moments. Last year, five of his 10 goals were game winners. He has a Stanley Cup with us, 20 points in 69 games, four game-winning goals again, three of his four in 2026. Gerard's second pair, if not gone. And this is from an Avs fan who loves him. I hear you. If we don't move him at the very least, uh, he's off the top pair, I would think. I agree. I agree. At the very least, he's off the top four. We can explore Gerard offers at the draft and see if there's anything there. And if not, we can explore again uh, on July 1st. Well said. That is very good. Very good. There is very, a little bit. That is very good. So Beck getting moved out so we can get more time on ice. Yeah, that makes sense. We love Beck, but we need to have some spots open in the top nine. And Beck's never really been able to grow into the top six centerman for us. Trevor Moore, big, you know, tears streaming down my face. That's tr Beck has the clutch, though. If he's happy as fourth line center, maybe that's a different story. That's true, Narf. Trevor Moore, tears streaming down our faces. An original Starfleet member. He has been an incredible part of this franchise mode series. Started off as what? It was in 83, 84. He went up to an 86. He had as many as 75 points a couple of years ago. He's been a consistent 50 plus point player, 50, 60 plus. Which players are moved out from the... Oh, it's uh, it, would be, it would be Hart on the Flyers. McLeod from the Devils. Uh, Cal Foote from the Devils farm team, the Utica Comets. Um, Formenton isn't in the NHL, so not a big deal. And then uh, Dubé on the Flames. Those are the five you want to move out of your roster. Um, so yeah, roller coaster plus minus from Trevor Moore, but he's been a great trooper through and through. In the postseason last year, 31 points in 24 games. He was definitely like getting Conn Smythe votes out there. He has been so fun. I love these storylines. He's a Data 782 Hall of Fame uh, honorable mention, if not nominee, I would think. I've really enjoyed having him here. But the thing is, expiring contract, he wants six plus million, and we don't really have the spots in the top six. So this is where we're talking about the next generation. Hellenius, Stenberg, Rubrik. These are players who are going to be taking over the top nine next season. Otto Stenberg, that's one of those guys right there. Stenberg had good numbers this year for low ice time. 31 points playing 10-25 per night that was mostly fourth minute uh, fourth line minutes that we bumped up the third line towards the end of the season so give Otto Stenberg the third line former first round pick 77 faceoffs maybe try him as third line center Otto Stenberg could be good or Lysel stays on the third line Stenberg gets traded a few different ideas uh we could trade Trevor Moore but it would just be his rights for a late pick that would probably be it Jalen Ramirez four goals five points Romanov he's been a solid third pair guy uh, yes, Hellenius, I think, can fill Moore's spot well. That's exactly how you spell his name. I found a save on the fourth line. Pesci's on his way out. Again, another original Starfleet member. Now, after five years in the franchise, people are starting to move. Uh, I've been arguing for the lack of Girard. Um, you mean in the, in the top four there, Mila? So Brett Pesci, he's been with us through all five seasons. His points has go have gone down over the years, but he's been pretty consistent enough in the plus minus. Big 20 plus minute per night kind of guy, eating a lot of minutes. But again, another one who's going to be just pretty much pushed out. His defensive attributes are fine. It's just that with, again, the next generation, we're not going to really have that space with Moogley coming up from the AHL and having another American there makes things a bit messy. Not the money or the ice time, in my opinion. I hear you, Myla. I don't necessarily disagree with you. I just would want a, a better option if we're definitely moving him out. Um, Joe says, I've, argue, I've arguably, been, arguably been Moore's least favorite AGM, but considering his point production, I think we just let his contract run out and place him in the lineup forever. Well, actually, his contract has run out. It's He's a UFA now. I see that point there, but he, has, his, he is an expiring UFA here. Um, I think we're making a decision on one of Lysel or Stenberg, barring a huge overall jump in the top six. That's the thing. I think Lysel could get a chance in the top six, Hobbsy. That's what I'm saying. So there's Pesci. Goaltending, we had the three-headed monster between Greaves, Kosa, even Meech and uh, Mikola. We had four different goalies play. It was, I, this was pretty unprecedented. Goalies are always voodoo, but we had four different goalies just not do enough. Kosa was probably the best of them, I guess, but... Yeah, it was the goaltending really fell apart. So heading into next season, we'll have Kosa, Greaves, and Mikola, three-headed monster going. I'm going to read that from uh, Cheating Heels comments in just a moment. But Yuha Mikola, high elite, former third-round pick. I would think he jumps in overall as high elite. I would think he gets a massive jump, well, like a fair jump. Yeah, Meech wasn't bad in the end. I would think he gets a fair jump in the overall to start next year. Meech, good old Meep. 
One over. Yeah, that was the overtime loss when Gerard gave away the the puck and Meech uh, couldn't stop him on the breakaway. Yeah. So there's your quick recap on the situation of the team, the the state of the franchise, if you will, headed into the 2028 draft and off season. If we look at our contract situation right now, who's expiring, who's going where? We do see Panarin, Moore, Guliev, Stenberg, all those guys. Rubrik will get his contract. He'll be in the top nine guaranteed, if not the top six. Hopefully, he gets a good jump as well. Fluffy from the first Harry Potter? True, exactly. Honestly, I know this is kind of crazy. I've never seen any of the Harry Potter movies or read any of the books. I know. I, put, I just went on the record saying that. I'm sorry. I got to do it. I got to do it. Uh, yes, so Panarin, if he were to come back, he'd be looking probably somewhere in the eight, nine millions, if we can get 85%. Trevor Moore, we just don't have the space for him, but we could probably get him into the fives. It's just, we don't have the space. Guliev's up to an 82, we gotta pay him. We could go for a bridge on him for just a two-year thing for Guliev. We, you know, when it comes to other players, if you're sure that you want to keep a guy, there's no problem going eight years. But when the voodoo is, um, oh, ooh, Hobbsy. If the voodoo is going to be the voodoo, I'd rather just give him a two-year deal, keep him as an RFA, and reevaluate when the time comes. I'm going to qualify and get Guliev for cheaper. He's been good, but to pay him $6 million already? No, no, no. It's just the EA uh, system. 46 points, were, that was great. But he can probably get like a 2 by 5 type of thing, and we'll reevaluate from there. Otto Stenberg, he's going to want only $1 million, Really? We'll do a three-year bridge, like three years. Like you got you are a fourth, third line. If you want to get into the middle six full time, you got to prove yourself. Or probably maybe even two years, like two years, one point seven five type of thing on Otto Stenberg. I might lock that in right now, actually. Yeah, two years at one point seven five on Otto Stenberg, and then that'll leave us one more year to to have him as an RFA, and then after that he can get his big contract if he's staying. So two years at one point seven five. I think that he would want to bet on himself more than that. Then you can get one year at three million as opposed to three years at like 1.85. So two years at 1.75 on Stenberg. The rest we're gonna wait on them. Uh, oh, there you go. All right, thanks, Joe. Thank you. Always nice to learn a little something. Uh, and there you have it. So and goaltenders we had yeah Greaves was expiring. Greaves we're, Greaves will be signed to be part of that three-headed monster. So you know what? I'm gonna give him yeah I'll give him exactly what he wants right now. Two years, 800K. He wants league minimum, but a one-way deal. So you know what? Let me go 900. Let's go two years, 900K on Greaves. And he'll be part of the three-headed monster. He just came out of the AHL, technically. So he still has to prove himself. He played 13 games in the NHL. He has 15 games in his entire NHL career. Two years at 900K. That makes perfect sense for him. Then if he wants to be a full-time NHL backup or whatever else, then he can try to get a contract after that. Aside from everybody else, we'll wait until after the draft is done to send out any other offers, correct? Yes. Okay. So that's where we are right now. So what I'm going to do is just pull up the comments. There are a couple of big ones from the last one. Um, yeah, Greaves, that, that's the thing. Who knows if he becomes something in in the in-season sim. Maybe we end up, do, we do end up, you know what? Let me read what Cheating Heel said. It'll be a little more clear once I do that. Cheating Heel left the usual novel. You love to see it. Let me just find it here. Let me pull it up for you. Yeah, Shields up the last episode. Okay. Good old CH. Cheating Heel left a book. What a roller coaster of a playoff. Greaves was great and fell apart. Then Kosa did the same. Blah, blah, blah. In terms of just EA voodoo. I feel like we're in for a big offseason ahead of us. We need to shore up our defense. Pesci needs to go and it will also help to play with the defense pairs if we replace him by another nationality as having three USA players is handcuffing us. Gerard has been great for a while, but since we gave him a big extension, it's been a total letdown, so he also probably needs to go. JP, good old CH, the lore master of the, data of the Dataverse. CH, Hobbsy, um, uh, um, what's, who, who are some of the comment legends who I can go back to? Um, what's his name? I'm totally blanking. On, he just came back and he, he left his first comment in a lot. Uh, Yirka Halby. Yirka Halby just left his first comment in like a couple of years. On, uh, I digress. In Nets, we go, do we go with another three-headed monster until we see what our young netminer can do? I feel like Kosa and Greaves each had their ups and downs this season, so I'm not sure which of the two I'd keep to play with Mikola. Mikola is definitely a lock. Now the question is who plays with him long-term, uh, Kosa or Greaves? That's me saying that. 
back to the comment. I wouldn't mind playing musical chairs at least until the deadline, and we could then look into trading one of them. Or Greaves can be our AHL starter, and we bring him up if we have injuries, or if one of the other two aren't cutting it. He's a good break glass in case of emergency option. On offense, it's a shame we can't bring Crosby back for a year. We can extend Panarin for a year or two, but I wouldn't go higher than that as he's bound to regress. We also need to have Stenberg play on the third line, which means we all either have to bring Lysel up into the top six or trade him, but I don't know whose spot he'd take if he were to move up. That's the thing. Hellenius has to make the team full-time next year. Yes. We probably have to let Moore go unless we extend him, and then Lysel gets traded, blah, 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 but... It makes more sense like this, I think, unfortunately, as much as it hurts. Um, moving Lysel in the top six would mean that Lindholm would have to be a lock on line one. So if Lindholm's a lock on the first line, because Lysel's in the second line, that kind of uh, hurts our situation with the centerman, because we want Perfetti and McIntyre to play together, playmaker, sniper. But if Perfetti and McIntyre and Lindholm are all on the first line, that's, those are three players who are all center eligible playing on the first line. If the second line is Panarin, Fiala, and Lysel, well then who's playing center? So it would have to be Lindholm plays on the first line, and then one of McIntyre or Perfetti play on the second line. We can't have McIntyre and Perfetti together, and that would hurt production. I'd prefer to ha I really want Perfetti to grow, but McIntyre is also our Morris Richard winning player. That's another thing to consider about Lysel being in the top six. It would also say who's our second line center. Uh, let's see. So maybe Cheating Hill says maybe we trade out Perfetti. Um, he's not producing as much as we'd like, unfortunately. So if we can find an upgrade, we might as well pull the trigger. Personally, I'd, per I'd want to wait at least another full year on Perfetti. Young guy has 70 plus points at less than six and a half million. I want to give him another season. At the draft, a few ideas that we can target. Um, the guy ranked, the Russian right winger at 10 could be a guy. Gerard, Pesci, Lysel, whatever it might be, could be trade pieces. In free agency, if Kucherov drops, we can't pass on him twice. We passed on him last year. He would make Moore quite expendable and would make us a just a beast of a team. I wouldn't mind Robertson either. Jason Robertson might be there if we can't get Kucherov as he's younger, but the nationality being American isn't as helpful. Um, could be maybe Ovechkin, Marchenko... Uh, getting another rush in the lineup would be helpful. If we move Gerard out, maybe we get a guy like Thomas Shabbat if he's available in free agency. And then the LA Kings are sellers, so maybe we go after Brant Clark even. And then there's even Mikey Anderson, maybe Philip Hronik. A few ideas for who we go after on defense. If we're to move out Gerard, have Guliev and Hudson on the left, and then bring in someone new on the right. Or Ramirez on the left and Guliev, he's able to play the right, so that is good as well. Um, let's see. Lineup suggestion. I know it's a long one. I'm finishing it up here. Lineup suggestion would be Panarin, Perfetti, McIntyre on the first, Rubrik, Fiala with Lindholm, and Fiala, Kucherov on the wings there. Then the third line would be one of Moore, Fiala, or Rubrik. So that would be Rubrik, Stenberg, Hellenius. Fourth line, Afanasev, Beck, Kapanen, whatever else. So there's a few ways we can think about it. We have the money to make a few splashes. Let's get this team back to the final and win it all. This is going to be another exciting season, off season. Go Fleet. Thank you very much, Cheating Heel. And then one other comment coming from Gen Z McKenzie. Thank you for bearing with me, last one. And then I'll just look at the Discord server quickly because DICE did some good work in there. For contracts, we can qualify Guliev. That's exactly what we're going to do. Stenberg, you can do 3 by 1.6, but like I said, I'd prefer to do two years, so that's what we ended up doing. Uh, for trades, you should trade Beck because he's basically stuck on the third line and will never grow. But that's the thing. Yes, he'll never grow, but if he's a lock for being a consistent bottom six center, that also has value there, right? Uh, we can also trade Gerard because he's limiting the, uh, limiting the ice time of our younger offensive defenseman players, and he's been mildly disappointing the past two seasons. Pesci is aging, and this was, he was not as good this year, so he would get moved out. Target a top 4D. For the draft, to think about the guy at 10, Spruev, yes. For free agency, if we can't trade for a top 4D, then we should sign one, and also a first-line forward like Kucherov, Robertson, Hishir, Kaliev, etc., even a fourth line center would be a good addition as well. And that just about does it. So thank you for that, Gen Z McKenzie. Another big one from Gen Z. And finally, looking at the Discord server, uh, Dice, Andrew there, was doing a lot of work when it came to the Google Sheets and throwing in some potential uh, permutations and combinations. If it would be Hudson in for Gerard, Rubric in for Moore, and then Hellenius, Haikila, and Mikula entering the lineup as well, and Mugli on the third D pair, the lineup would probably be a top six of Rubric, Lindholm, Fiala, Perfetti, and McIntyre, leaving one spot open, then that is someone we go out and acquire, but that's without Lysel in the lineup. 
Third line, Beck, Stenberg, Hellenius. And then fourth line, Haikila and a mix of players. Defense, Hudson Guliev, Romanov Ramirez, Hunt Mugli. But if we're open to keeping Romanov on the third D pair, and we want to put Lysel up on the second line, that would mean we have a full top six forwards. We have a couple spaces in the bottom six, and we can use a, a top four defenseman depending on what happens with Sam Girard. So there's a lot of different ways that we can go here. You know, if Kutra drops a free agency, he should be priority one, says Dice. We could move back to fourth line center and then Rubert to third line left wing, but then you need two top six wingers. There's a lot of ways to think about it. Oof, so a lot of comments there. Thanks everybody for bearing with me. Now let's get started on the draft. At the draft, I'm not going to be trading any players who are signed on long term, I don't think. Like the um, the uh, Pesci's and the... Well, maybe Pesci, but probably Gerard. I wouldn't trade yet. It would be the perfect deal. For Beck, you want him to grow, speaking for you as a Canadian. Yes, of course, I would want him to grow, but it doesn't seem to be happening. So us, uh, we're looking at potentially looking at the 10th overall, uh, yeah, maybe like the 11th overall pick in Spruev, Timofey Spruev. He's NHL ready. We don't know what his uh, potential is. He might be top six, might be elite, but either way, he does look NHL ready in terms of his overall, excuse me. So that has value, but... Uh, do we, are we able to trade up? We have, uh, we don't even have a first round pick. That's true. We'd have to trade up a fair amount of value to get there. So I'm not thinking about too, too much here at the draft. Let's see what's available first and go from there. The gem at three will take a lot of trade value. Let's, let's do our uh, due diligence here. And he picks up for grabs here at the draft in the top few. No, actually, oh yes, two. It's camouflaged in the second overall pick up for grabs. Okay. Uh, then seven. So two, seven, 12 up for grabs. So just for example, if we want to look at the second overall pick here from the Boston Bruins, they are buyers. So if I were to just say, here's Sam Girard, the value is not too far off, but let's look at maybe cheaper options for them. Uh, we have to trade a prospect probably. Maybe Lysel goes back to Boston with... No, it wouldn't really work. It would have to be Girard. It would have to be Girard. So if I give you Girard, I have to take back some money. I take back a con maybe an expiring contract from you with low trade value. Grizzly, no. Uh, Lazat, yeah, I'll take back Bla Blake Lazat from you. There you go. So I'll take Blake Lazat as a UFA. I give you Sam Girard. I get the second overall pick. This isn't going to go through, but just to see what they would say. Value is too far off. So I'll give you Sam Girard. And I'd have to dip into the picks here, and they aren't even ones that have much value. So if I throw a fourth in there, I don't even I don't want to offer it just in case. But are we okay with moving Sam Girard? I don't know. Mark says no. Because if we move Sam Girard, we want to bring back a defenseman, and I'm not sure if there's any defenseman out there. I don't want to be stuck playing Romanov on the second pair when he's more of a third pair guy. I don't know. For the second overall pick, and who would we get at second overall again? Would we get a defenseman? Who was there again? I, I'm blanking here. Uh, okay, we could get the Ludwig Eriksson. Ludwig Eriksson is NHL ready. And A-plus physical, 6'2 defensive defenseman. But why not, why not have Beck as a fourth-line center, doggy? Why not just have him as permanent fourth-line center? Uh, there's no. Uh, there's also Weidman, Shannon Weidman, NHL ready, two-way D. Defensive defenseman gem. We do run the risk of not having the replacement unless Erickson, if he's like an 81 overall, uh, having a Swede on defense is also helpful. You gotta remember that having a Swede on defense would be helpful. So then the defense would end up being the top. But then is he is Ludwig Erickson able to play top four just yet? Probably not. But could we survive without Gerard in our top four? It would be sad to move him. It would be sad to move him. So McDonough goes first overall, 83 overall, medium elite. That's big. Do they want defense? Swedish flexibility and gem listing is very valuable as well. On defense, one, two, three, four, five, sorry. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, okay. So they have uh, Matt Waz expiring. They'd probably have McAvoy Lindholm first pair. And then it'd be like Chikrin, Girard, second pair. Hudson, Guliev, Romanov, Ramirez is livable. Yeah, Nathan, welcome to the stream, buddy. Do the Bruins really want... They don't really want Girard, though. That's the thing. So if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. But at least we can say we tried it, right? 
If it doesn't work, it doesn't work, but at least we can say we tried. So let's start it with a fourth. Let's start it with a fourth. And we take back uh, Lazat, we said. There we go. We'll take back Lazat. We maybe bring back uh, Matt Wa. No, he wouldn't be enough money. Okay. What does Boston say to this? Value's too far off. Take out the fourth and make it into a third, perhaps. Uh, I don't like trading top three picks, but if this makes it happen... I don't want to say goodbye. We'll do the big goodbye and tearful look over stats if it happens. Girard and pick 96. Five more years of Sam Girard and pick 96. In exchange for the second overall pick, the Bruins are buyers. They want to do it. And Lazat to just free up the cap space. Boston, what do you say? Value's too far off. Let's see if we can add. We have picks next year? Not that much. Eh? We've used a lot of our picks, technically. I don't like that we've used so many. Can I throw in a rookie who's uh, just a whatever rookie? Uh, Nurmi? Do you have room to take on a contract if I give you Nurmi? Yeah, you could. How about Nurmi? Does that get you there? Isn't sufficient at all. Sorry to offend. Uh, do we throw in, throw in Verkanen or Nesterov? Low elite guys. Odell, 67 at 20. 57-19. Nesterov. Artem Nesterov, 6th round pick. I remember him last year. I like this the shooting categories. Can I give you another contract? Yeah, you can. And Malatesta? We say value is too far off. So I'll give you Nurmi and another pick, maybe. I'm trying. I'm trying. Do we have a goalie prospect to throw their way? Galvis, medium backup? No, not Romanov. Thanks for the due diligence. Not going to work. Thanks, JP. I appreciate you noticing and recognizing. I can throw the medium backup. Value is not, isn't sufficient at all. And last I can do is maybe throw in... I can make it a third this year and a fifth next year. No. Make it a sixth this year. How about a third and a sixth? Sweden... Oh, look, okay, Sweden just a touch! Another seventh. Hold on. Do we want to do it if it's... If we give you a sixth and take back a seventh? What about this, ladies and gentlemen? Time's getting tough, so let, leave me a thought quickly. Two sixths. 96, two sixths, and Gerard and Nurmi for a second and a seventh. That's interesting. So we need just a touch. We don't have anybody. Let's see. Okay, trade accepted. Let's go with 26 seconds to spare. Okay. Okay. Wow. Tearful, tearful goodbye to Sam Gerard. Wow, we gotta give him, we gotta give it to him. We gotta give him his moment here. Sam Gerard. We got him as an, what, an 85 overall in the expansion draft. The Avalanche didn't have the room for him anymore. We got him, we played him top pair with Brett Pesci. He has been to three consecutive Stanley Cup finals. He's had an A on his chest. He's been, didn't, did he, nah, he didn't win the Norris, but he should have. He has been a consistent, consistent, consistent top pair guy, even if the points didn't come through. That we were upset with him for, but I'm saying just for eating so many minutes, he was very consistent for that. His point production was up and down, but for the minutes that he ate, consistently at, you know, 26 even, but always between 24 and a half or 26 plus minutes per night. Crazy. He got his Stanley Cup ring with us. He spent five full seasons here in San Francisco. We thank you, Sam Girard, for your time with the franchise. We got to just see the final totals. Just give me a quick second with the calculator. We got to give it to him. So four times 82. Uh, we just traded Sam Girard, Gen Z. We just traded Sam Girard. Uh, plus seven. So in 405 games, in 405 games as a Starfleet officer... 405 games, 321 points in 405 games, almost 0 0.8 points per game. You got to give it to him. And he was a plus player in the end also. It has nothing to do with not saying that he can't stay here anymore. It's just that it's the point production has been a bit... Yeah, thank you, Hobbsy. The point production has been a little bit inconsistent. The postseason, really, we didn't like what he did in the postseason. Nine points, negative nine, really, really hurt. So, you know, we give him a fresh... Uh, he, he, we give him his contract. He'll get paid. Now he has a fresh opportunity in Boston. They're buyers. And now we say good luck over there. We, I'm sure we'll see you in the future. We love you. We love you. We love you. And we wish you all the best. We traded picks. We traded like a third and a couple of sixths. For the second overall, with Sam Girard for the second overall pick, which Boston wanted to move. And now, as great as it would be to get a medium elite playmaking winger, we have the wings. What we need is the defense. So not only do we get a defenseman, we get a medium elite gem at 17 who's NHL ready and with the Swedish nationality. We have more Swedes here in San Francisco. So, all that being said, let's head up onto the podium.
Let me just figure out how to say this name. La... <laughs> With the second overall selection in the 2028 NHL entry draft, the San Francisco Starfleet are proud to select from La Pinantra of Liga, Ludwig Eriksson. Welcome to Team Bello. You are 79 overall medium lead. All right. That's to be expected. Anything lower than that, I would have been... Like 77, I would have been upset. 79 at 17, I can take. I was hoping 80, 81. But 79, we can take. Ludwig Eriksson, let's see it. Oh, you know What? You know what? These guys often have 83, 84 as shot blocking and stick checking. He already has 88 shot blocking and 86 stick checking. Three and a half star defense, three and a half star physical. Pretty well rounded, I gotta say. Ludwig Eriksson and the uh, rel relentless superstar ability. Wow, all right, Ludwig, welcome to San Francisco. And yes, we will be trading some expiring players to get to recoup some value here. So if we're gonna offer some trades. Um, I'd almost say let's keep Pesci for the third pair if we need the money. I don't know. Maybe we're going to have so much cap space. Maybe Pesci stays. When he hits 18, that's what we're hoping. Yeah. 17, 79. Hopefully 18 means 80, 81 plus. So let's look at our expiring contracts here. We can definitely look to trade out uh, Trevor Moore, we were saying. As much as we love him, the room is not there anymore in the top six or even in the top nine, really. Like Sal, we want to bring him back. Uh, Panarin, I would like to bring Panarin back. Oh, man. Like, do we move out Panarin for Kucherov? Do we move out a player who's won a con Smythe and just scored 92 points with us and led our points in the playoffs? Do we move him out just to bring in someone who's never played a game for us before? That would be hard to rationalize as well, no? Uh, yeah, Damon Hunt is... No, Hunt could probably stay. But Trevor Moore... Uh, no, sorry, I want fine trade, fine trade. Trevor Moore, we can trade him for like a sixth round pick or whatever he would fetch. Another player who needs a little, deserves a good send-off here. I know he's better, but I gotta hear a storyline to, to, rational, to, to, yeah, to rationalize it. Trevor Moore, we can get a 7th, of course. We can get a 7th. The pick two, the very last pick in the draft. The absolute last pick in the draft from the Devils who swept us out of the Stanley Cup Final. I don't even want to do that. It's not even worth the last pick in the draft, honestly. We don't even have the entire draft class un uncovered. I'd rather him go to free agency than we purposely trade him to New Jersey. No, I don't think we can do it. Unless we can get a seventh from... And then these teams don't even want to give us sevenths. No, Trevor Moore's not moving then. Unless we add him in. He could be a sign-and-trade candidate. We, yeah, we could just do that. But we'll have to put a limit on ourselves. We wouldn't sign-and-trade more for like a first plus. It would probably be just for like a third-round pick or something. Yeah, so that's exactly what we're going to do. We'll sign and trade more, but we'll put our own restrictions on it so that we're not going to cheese the system. So that's about it. We don't have anyone else who's expiring. Everyone else is going to be there on July 1st. Can you swap him for another UFA's rights? Cheating heel. There he is. And Rasmussen just went. So he would have been great. 81 overall medium lead guy. Of course, he would have been great to have, but we needed the defenseman here. We have the wings. We have to, do, we have to make an organizational pick there. Um, so we were looking like, for example, Thomas Shabbat is going to be there in free agency potentially. So if I go to Ottawa and I want his UFA rights, and I go over and I see the Senators, and I click on Thomas Shabbat. He has, yeah, he has some trade value there. So Shabbat for Moore, it wouldn't work. They want Trevor Moore even, but no, we could, yeah, let's check on Kucherov's rights as well. Good point. Kucherov's rights. They want Trevor Moore there in Tampa Bay. Kucherov's rights. He has value. He has value for sure. 94 overall. It's so good. He would be incredible to have on this team. But it's hard for me to rationalize moving out Panarin. Unless we don't move out Panarin, it would be... The, the top six would, in, would be Panarin. Let's say Kucherov first line. Panarin second line. But then Lysel would have to stay on the third line. And that means Stenberg can't play third line either. So that means we're back... If we bring in Kucherov... It means Lysel or Stenberg has to leave. That's the thing. That is the thing. So if I were to say, okay, let's get uh, Kucherov. I give you Trevor Moore. I'd have to give you one of those guys, Lysel or uh, Stenberg, to make it happen. 82-23, 83-25. I mean, technically Lysel's proven a lot more. He's two years older, but he's proven a lot more. Stenberg, maybe he caps out as an 82, you know? Should we move one of Lysel or Stenberg to avoid the third line? That's exactly what I'm saying, JP. That's exactly what I'm saying. Maybe Stenberg leaves then. I love Otto Stenberg. We got him from the Blues. 
We didn't know if he'd have room to play on the team. No, Lysel can't play second line if it's gonna if the lineup's gonna be. Um, it would be. Hold on, let me just do it mentally here for a second. It would be Kucherov in theory. Kucherov, Lindholm, McIntyre. Second line, Panarin, Fiala. Hold on. Okay, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Um, so first line would be Lindholm, Kucherov, McIntyre. Second line, Perfetti, Fiala, Panarin. So there you go. Yeah, Lysel would still be a third liner. So there you go. Yeah, that's it. One, two, three, four, five. Add Kucherov. There's six of your top six. So no, Lysel can't play second line. So I would say probably Lysel stays third line. And then the one leaving, oh, I can trade Blake Lazat's right, would be Otto Stenberg. Let's let Montreal make their pick here. So Moore and Stenberg would go together to the Lightning. Canadians take Costi. Oh, yikes! Ooh -hoo -hoo. 63 overall, high top 6 at 4th overall. That stings. I don't know. Lysel continues to prove himself. We need players who can prove themselves in the simulation. We need players who simulate well. And Lysel has shown himself to be a player like that. Owie. So I say, okay, Tampa Bay. Give me Kucherov's rights. Ah, uh, yeah, the Canadians are hurting. I'll give you... Where'd he go? Stenberg. We got him from St. Louis. I forget what the trade was. We got him from the Blues, knowing that it might be crowded to get him into the lineup one day, but we'd cross that bridge when we got there. Now, here we are. That day has come to cross that bridge. 72 points in... The, sorry, 76 points in the AHL last year. 31 points this season in 82 games. Uh, yeah, that's it, Skippy. Low ice time for Stenberg. He did well with his low ice time. I wanted to see more from him, but he might be capped out as... Uh, well, he could never be a first liner with Lindholm, but... What about Rubric? Yeah, that's, and that's it. So then the third line becomes um, Lysel, Rubric, and Hellenius. But then who plays center? Hellenius, 65. Lysel, 66 on faceoffs. And Rubric, 60... No, I don't care about Beck. It's that who's the third line center. That's the question. I don't care about Beck. He can be fourth line center. The question is, where does Rubric go? Uh, if we replace Panarin with Kucherov or another first line... Yeah, if we replace Panarin with Kucherov, I'm saying if we keep Panarin and Kucherov, because I have a hard time rationalizing trading out Panarin, who's been so good with us, won a con Smythe, Led our team in points in the regular season and the postseason to bring in a player who is, you know, has never played a game for us before, despite how good he is. Could get a third line center in free agency, but then it means one of Rubric, Lysel, or Hellenius play on the fourth line, and that we can't have. Maybe Panarin wants out after the cup loss? I don't know. Yeah, but trading back doesn't solve our problem right now. I'm talking about the top six and top nine. Beck would be fourth line center. It doesn't change anything. It has nothing, no impact on this situation right now. Let's let, uh, let Winnipeg make their pick. How good is this pick after what the Canadians took? Ooh, medium elite defenseman goes after Costi. Ouch. So Wyden was another guy that we were looking at on defense, but um, a year older, less on the defensive attributes. And it can't be Hellenius if Hakila's... Yeah, Hakila is a lock for the fourth line. Hellenius is a lock for the third line. Yeah. I don't think we can do Kucherov. I'm trying to rationalize. I'm really doing my due diligence in my mental gymnastics. We'd have to move out Panarin. And I'm not sure I can figure out moving out Panarin. I don't think we're okay with, with Hellenius on the fourth line. I don't think we're okay with Hellenius on the fourth. Yes, we get Kucherov there. That's why I think Lysel is the odd man out if we get another top six. I can't say Brandon wanting to leave if the front office is going for a superstar. But, no, but Kucherov's not young. Panarin's old, we can get someone younger, says Gen Z. For those of you who are watching after the live stream, you don't see the messages on the screen. It wouldn't be really getting anyone younger. Kucherov's 35 and Panarin's 36, right? Uh, yes, exactly. So Panarin isn't as good, technically, but he's been our leader the last couple seasons in points. I think it would make sense to give him another one. If we're giving a one-year contract to a mid-30-year-old guy who's going to put up big points from Russia, it's probably the guy that we've had the last two years who's proven himself um, enough for us to say that we, that we can trust him. 
Yeah, I know we're giving a lot of time to this and probably a bit more than I should. But Lysel keeps getting better every season. Panarin's been great. Maybe we revisit it on July 1st if Kucherov drops a free agency. But I don't think a trade for Kucherov will happen here, ladies and gentlemen. Um, okay, the point is we need at least one Russian in the top six. Yes, exactly. And all oh, the Canadians continue to get just, just smacked in the mouth with an 81 overall medium elite going after. Okay, so the one thing we can do for sure is trade out the rights to Blake Lazat, no matter what. Any offer, if there's anyone who wants him, I'm trading him because he's not coming back on this team anyways. Blake Lazat, anybody want him? No, no trades found. So he will go to free agency. Uh, and that's about it here. That's about it. So I guess at this point we can move to our next pick, which is at pick 63. Anyone we really want to trade up for? I'm sure there is, but if we really want to trade up... We already traded up for two, so I'm not trading up for 10. But is there anybody in like the 30s, 40s, whatever, that we want to uh, trade up for? Medium top four. Did we trade Moore's rights? No, we didn't, because the only team offering us a draft pick was um, was New Jersey. And I didn't want for the last pick in the draft. And because our scouting isn't good, it would be a shot in the dark at someone random. And I prefer that he doesn't go to the guy, the team that just swept us. Um, someone younger to replace? Yes, we could Gen Z, but we don't need to do it now. That's what I'm saying. If we keep Panarin, we can always be back in this situation next year. Panarin is going to be replaced eventually by Rubric. I don't want to get another like a 25 year old superstar when we have Rubric, we have Hellenius, we have Mikola, we have uh, strong wingers who are coming up in the system. I don't want to add to the logjam by bringing in someone who's 10 years younger than Panarin. Panarin works well because he's on our timeline. By the time he's leaving, Rubric, Hellenius are moving into the top six. Pivko would be a guy that I'd want to look at four years away though, but I like the nationality. At 38, it would be hard to acquire that pick though, that's the thing. Uh, gem here, Wes Holt, right D, three years away, okay, uh, three bar medium elite, Ed Riddle, we had said we might want to look at him, right D is, probably well, he's 20, he's 20, but three years away, 20, uh, so we can probably just go to our next pick at this point, you may think that maybe make, uh, Jordan Morales as a Swiss player could be good, even though he's five years away. So let's jump at the pick 63 then. Pick 63. Let's see who ends up going in round one later on. Uh, medium. Oh, then here come the medium top sixes. Ouch. Medium, here's this guy. Rammer was a 79 overall. Walton 74. Where's uh, Spruev? Spruev, he was ranked 11th. He goes 15th. Wow, he would have been nice to pick up. He was indeed uh, NHL ready at 78 overall, but medium top six. Riddle me this. We should draft Riddle. <laughs> Medium top sixes. Morales caught my eye for sure. Yeah, nothing crazy. Medium top nine, medium top six D. Ouch. Medium, oh, this is, yeah, we were talking about Benjamin Crowder. Yeah, Benjamin Crowder, 17-year-old, 75 overall. I would have loved to have Benjamin Crowder if we had a, a late first. But again, if it as much as it hurts to pass up on good prospects, if it means that we got to have uh, Ludwig there at second overall, and then that's the price you got to pay. Data, that was a great trade for second. Had all oh, perfect, doggy. Now you're back up to uh, up to speed. Glad you liked it. You know, like six, 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 seven guys. Yeah, keep your eyes peeled for those guys as well. I remember it's funny. We had Rempe in the Seattle Kraken franchise mode, in NHL 22, and I never thought about him ever again until he's been on the scene now in the NHL, making making waves and headlines in the real world. Uh, so here we are with uh, pick 30 at the end of the second round. So I think we probably trade down to recoup some picks and probably take Morales at 75 or something. So 64, 65, 66, 67, 68, 69, 70. Oh, we passed Riddle? We can trade with Boston again. Did Riddle, had Riddle got, oh, by Arizona? Oh, sorry. No, I think that was Reese, wasn't it? Or something like that? Oh, it was here, Riddle, 63 overall. Ed Riddle. Yeah, at 20 years of age, 63 overall, that's the guy that you trade away, pretty much. Yeah, I'm okay with that. So, we'll go ahead and trade down for the Bruins pick. Um, did I count that right? No, I didn't count that right at all. What am I doing? Did I? No, I wanted 70? I wanted more like 75, no? Uh, 71, 72. Let's trade with the Lightning for 72. RJ just got back from getting ice cream with the fam. Ooh, getting hot over there, RJ? Okay, I see you. Good for you. Hope you enjoy. Doing okay over here. Thank you. Yeah, what flavor? We'll give you. I'll give you 63 for 72. 
And can you toss in uh, a sixth and a seventh? What do you say, Tampa? Rejected. Can you toss in a sixth? Of course, rejected. Why in the world would they do that? Um, maybe they want to give picks next year. Can I get a fifth next year to trade down with you? Uh, no, it doesn't meet the block particularly well. What a joke. What a real joke. Can I get, can I get like, the last pick in the draft, please? For helping you move up whatever eight picks? So from a third, second to a third? Forget it! Forget it, I'll take my guy then. I'll take my guy. What a joke. Sunny with chocolate fudge and sprinkles and Reese's Pieces? Oh my goodness. Yeah, we'll make it, we'll make it. Uh, Jordan Morales from uh, Switzerland, from the NLA. Six foot four, 19 years of age. Welcome to Starfleet. 56 overall, medium top six. I will take that, no problem. <laughs> my job, I'm just in absolute shambles. Welcome everyone, we're close to 30 viewers right now. Welcome to the stream. Leave a like if you haven't already. We are in the 2028 off season with our expansion franchise mode, San Francisco Starfleet team. Five years into our franchise's history, we've made it to three consecutive Stanley Cup finals, doing it the good way, doing it the realistic way. We've been building this team from the ground up. And now here we are in the draft, looking to kind of build the next generation, moving into year number six next season. Anybody we really want to target here, Anyone we really want to target between now and like the 130s? Roger, ooh, we wanted to get Salvador Rogers for the nationality as well. Low top six gem. Yeah, Salvador at 88. So let's trade for like 86 or something. Let's trade for something like 86. Then maybe that's our last pick of the draft. Maybe it's our last pick. Who knows? So pick 86 would be good. So, so that's 64, 65, 66. 67, 68, 69, 70, 71, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 81. What did I say I wanted? Which pick should I want? 85? So 82, 83, 84, 85 from San Jose. Good. You spotted a J Chichu, did you? Okay. I'll give you 131 and someone to toss in. What kind of no name can I toss in for you? Uh, 80, okay, well, we're okay with this one. Malatesta, is he coming back next? No, Sereda. Mmm, Sereda, one of our draft picks. I wanted him to grow. Uh, probably Mal. He's there a dime a dozen in free agency. Pick 131 and the rights to Malatesta. What do you say? Hey, trade accepted. Thank you very much. I, I probably could have given you the rights to Blake Lazat even. Uh, okay, so that's going to give us pick 80 whatever to get that guy. The Pole. The Polish Butte himself. Oh, uh, don't tell me he went. Oh, come on. He was going 88th. Oh, he goes right here. Okay, 61 grinder. Oh, come on. He was going, he was ranked 88th and he went 84th. That's very rare. Jameson Chichu. Oh, that's so rare that the AI does. I like that it adds realism, but the AI always picks and chooses when it adds realism. So it, it makes it frustrating. We could take Donovan Ferguson, but he could just be a medium top 6D. That's risky. Or we just trade way down. Anybody else we're interested in? Not so much. Backups, top 6D. Like, 3 bar medium elite, I think, is the best I saw. Uh, top 9s. Um, 2 bar low elite kind of guys. Maybe we just trade it for a pick next year. We make no more picks in this draft, maybe? Yeah, I am going to sort by potential in a second. Just wanted to see if anybody was in the near future. Uh, is it cheese to trade the pick for him? I I don't think it is necessarily. Should we do that? I don't know. Or we took Dwayne, or we took Dwayne Willis. Three-bar medium league goalie, but 20 years old, five years away. Um, fave ice cream flavor. I love a soft-serve chocolate vanilla swirl. Oh my goodness. Salivating just thinking about it. Anybody else has a three bar low elite? No other guarantees though, eh? No. Ah, uh, boof. The scouting continues to, to hurt us here. Auto scouting continues to hurt us. Oh man. Um, do we have any goalies in the system? I don't want to do it just by size though. Sorry, wrong thing. Do we have any goalies in the system? Do I take Dwayne Willis? Or do we trade for a pick next season? Just kind of recoup the picks for next year. Goaltending is in the system. We have Zherdev, Medium Elite. We have Galvez. Only really Zherdev in the distant, distant future. There is High Starter here as well. Is it cheese to trade, trade the pick for a prospect? 
No, for a prospect? No, that's not cheese. Let's see what teams would give us. Let's take a time out here. I know we're really overthinking it for a third round pick, but let's just quickly see what a team would offer us for a third round pick. Oops, sorry. Fine trade. Or we just take Dwayne Willis. We trade down and take Dwayne Willis. For pick 85, what would teams give us? I could get a third next year and a random bottom six guy. Uh, anything that's a fourth I'm not even looking at. So basically getting a third next year with a toss-in. The rights to Zach Wierenski. Interesting. The rights to Zach Wierenski. That would be another Canadian. Um... It would be Wierenski and Hudson on the top, or like Guliev on the top pair. The top four would be Wierenski, Guliev, Hudson, and Ramirez. We were considering trading for him. Let's come back to Wierenski in a second. Wierenski, oh sorry, he's American. Yeah, 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 he's American. My apologies. Ah, uh, that's a problem then. Yeah, yeah, another American. Uh, that would be tough. That would be tough to add another American. That's that's a problem, honestly. To add another American, it's a problem. Brown and Monahan, Baron and Vetrano. Tavares' rights and a fourth. Nah. Ah, let's just trade down and take the goalie. The Norwegian goalie, I think, right? Yeah. USA is very that means Hudson or Ramirez don't play in the top four. We can't have that. So let's trade for like pick what is he, one fifteen? So let's add uh, so it's 85, 86, 87, 88, 89, 90, 91, 92, 93, 94, 95, 96, 97, 98, 99, 100, 101, 102, 103, 104, 105, 106, 107, 108, 109, 110 from Toronto. Let's go for. Let's see if I can add Blake Lazat and get a pick next year out of this. So here we go. I'll give you pick 85 right now. I'll throw in the rights to Blake Lazat. I don't want to keep him. So there you go. I'll give you Lazat and a third. And you give me a fourth now. And how about a fourth next year? Two fourths. Let's go crazy. And they have no they don't even have two fourths. And then we went, okay, forget Toronto then. Oh my goodness, forget Toronto. Pick we'll go for pick 109 or 111 even. They don't they didn't want any part of that trade. They didn't want the picks and they didn't want to give up any picks. Okay, forget it. Okay. They want okay, and now we here we go. Vancouver wants 85. Uh, and we'll give you Blake Lazat. Give me pick 111. And throw in a fourth next year. Let's see. Two fourths. Trade rejected, as I thought. Let's go with third and a, a fourth and a fifth. Trade rejected. Let's go a fourth and a sixth. Come on, for a third? Come on now. Even without Lazat. I have no seventh next year. I have no seventh. Fourth and a seventh. Let's go. Trade rejected, of course. I should just trade it for... I should just give you, for free, 85 for 111, just to be nice. I should just be a nice guy. You know what? Just because of that, I'm not going to draft the goalie then. I'm going to take a third next year. Forget it. I'm not taking a goalie ranked 115 at 85 when he's not a guaranteed elite. So I'm trading the third for a pick next, a third next year. Yeah, future... You got it, Gen Z. Third for a third next year. Let's trade with Chicago. Why not? Give me this guy Baxman. Actually, if I add, maybe I can take out Baxman and make it a, a seventh if I give you Lazat. Man, the things that we're trying here. I love sitting on this chair, by the way. I love swiveling. I'm a big swivel guy. And then they're over the salary cap, of course they are. But I'll retain. I'll retain for the end of the year here. Let's do that. Does that get you... Uh... Over the hump, still not enough. Oh my goodness. But Colorado said they could do it, right? Colorado, and they want Lazat. Great. Yeah, the other GMs have seen the series and they're afraid now. Okay, give me a Colorado third. And give me a seventh next year. A third and a seventh. <sighs> Value's too far off. Okay. Third for a third next year. Thank you. Oh. <sighs> okay, that's done. And they go ahead and select medium top 16. Okay, let's sim to the next round. and sim I want to see just what the goalie was. What was Willis in the end? Was he medium elite? I won't be furious, but I will be disappointed if I see if Stevenson was medium elite. Uh, what was his name again? I'll see. I'll know when I see it. Trade AI. Yeah, AI is super smart. 
Uh, there, no, that's not him. Uh, Willis, medium starter. Okay, thank goodness then. I didn't want to break my head for a 20-year-old medium starter. Whew, okay, so it wasn't a really busy draft in terms of uh, prospects coming in. Only Ericsson and Morales, a Swede and a Swiss. So there you go. Two more prospects joining our fold here in San Francisco. The next generation is not just for prospects who are here, it's for pro who are joining us, it's for prospects who are already here. So let's advance a day now. We have a couple of scouts to go resign. They're afraid of the fleecing powers, yeah. I've had a few good trades in my day. There you go. Matilda Zetterberg, love it. And Ariana Sampson. That was it. Okay, coaches are good to go. Uh, Jet Greaves renews and Otto Stenberg renews. Good. All right. It is the Howie Roseman of NHL franchise. Okay, JP, I see you. Uh, the scouts all A? No, not all of them, but most of them. And we're going to continue building on that in July. Okay, let me break out the calculator here. Calculator. Okay, here we go. Sweden Swiss or Swiss and Swede? It's, it's, don't get me started, Hobbsy. Okay, so our Temi Panarin, we want to resign him. Our Temi buddy, you want two years at 10.3. One year, it's gonna, we'll do one year. A 2BC freakout. Oh, I've had my moments. I think my craziest moments are as crazy as I get. 10.285%. Brings it down to 8.67. So, our Temi, if you want one year at 8.75, that would be fantastic. 8.75. If he wants to be really stubborn, maybe we do go Kucherov. But for right now, maybe one year, 8.75. Let's see what you say. Trevor Moore. Oh, Trevor, Trevor, Trevor. We love you. An original member of the Starfleet squad. Let's go ahead and just check his totals as well. A guy who is a 40-point player, 83 overall, comes to San Francisco in the expansion draft in 1, 2, 3... Plus 77, plus 78. In 401 games with San Francisco, Trevor Moore. Hold on, 401 games. Hold on. 401 games with 306 points. 306 points in 401 games. 0.76 points per game. So 306 of his career 424 points came in 401 of his 664 career games. Trevor Moore, thank you, my friend. It was an honor. It was a pleasure. We love you. We love you. We love you. I would resign him too, but it would mean that he has to play in the top nine, and that would mean one of our prospects being bumped to the fourth line. We can't have it. Trevor, buddy, we wish you all the best in your final big contract here. I'm glad we got you your ring. Thank you for the memories. What a legend, Trevor Moore. And Blake Lazat also going to get released right there. There you go. Rubric, we're going to sign him finally. Two years in the juniors after we drafted him. Sixth overall in 2026. He put up crazy numbers in the OHL. 132 points with Niagara. So let's finally get Ryan Rubric on a contract here to join us in the top nine. Ryan Rubric, bing, bang, bong. Uh, okay, so Luke Cunnan, I wouldn't mind having him as depth, continuing on as depth. Yeah, I can do one year, one mil on Luke Cunnan. I like it. We got the money. Looking at the rest of the UFAs here quickly. So Panarin, Cannon, Rubric, uh, Johansson. I'm going to release most of the UFAs from the AHL squad. I like to, you know, Samuel Johansson was good though, but most of the other U our, uh, UFAs will get released so we can have make, make sure we have room for uh, uh, other prospects who are coming in. Nico Sturm, nationality, helps very much in the bottom six. So let's try one year. You want 800k? Okay. Curtis Douglas. Yeah, we'll let him go. Six foot nine though. What a monster, Curtis Douglas. We'll let him go. He was great. Ryan Suzuki never really grew, but he's like our first line guy down there in the AHL. Let's keep giving him one, one year at a time. Alex Turcott will let him go. Gruka, low elite, will sign him on. And there we go. RFAs now. So Guliev is our first guy for sure. We're probably just going to be qualifying him. Yeah, we'll just qualify him. We'll come back later on. Damon Hunt, he could be depth D. Um, he wants one way. We'll just qualify then, I guess. He gets paid more, but it'll be a two-way deal. So we'll qualify Damon Hunt. Kapanen has also been good for NHL depth. I wouldn't mind bringing him back. I could do one year, one mil. He played a solid amount of games this season as well. Oliver Kapanen played 64 games this year. One year, one mil. Uh, Hunter McCone, yeah. McCown, McCone. 77 overall. He didn't play much minutes. I know. There's no room for Hunter down there in the NHL, I don't think. At least him. Kisikov, low top six. He was good this year. Let's give let's release Primo. Uh, release Prokop. 
Uh, release Maggio as well, but Kiss of Cobb I'll give a contract to, and we'll see who comes back once we go to, um, on July 1st in free agency. Anyone else unsigned? Ericsson, we'll see what happens with Ericsson. But in the future, if Ericsson and Mar Marchant, Marchant can be our top pair, that would be something. Ludwig from Sweden, and Marchant, Marchant, Marchant from, where was it, was it Austria? I forget where Cam was from. Drafted 7th overall. Suzuki with the Habs goal, love it, thanks RJ. Uh, okay, and the goaltending... I think we probably let Meech go at this point. Unless Meech is our AHL starter, and Eminen backs him up. But Mikola, Greaves, and Kosa are all... Yeah, he's Austrian, thank you. Kosa, Greaves, and Mikola are all in the top... Are all in the NHL. So does Eminen get to be the starter next year in the AHL? I think probably. And then Galvis will back him up. Yeah, that makes sense. So Wesley Meech, we got him as a toss-in. We had some fun with Meech. Meep, meep, meep. We had some fun with the good old Meepster. So uh, he played two games in the NHL in the postseason. One and one, eight, uh, sorry, 0 one and one, 882 save percentage, 4.3 goals against average. Wesley, buddy, thanks for everything. But we gotta, we gotta give the, the ice time to the young guys. So Eminen will be the starter and Galvis will back him up. And we'll see where it goes from there. There we go. Okay, so let's advance a day now. Good to go. Scouts are back in. Uh, Nico Sturm. I'd love to see Meech, but it probably doesn't make sense. Yeah, I know. I love Meech. But we gotta. if Galvis is ever going to grow, he's got to play. Cunnan wants to be given the chance to play more often. Fair enough. Panarin, yeah. If this was a real, I want to test the free agent market, I would say, wow, okay, maybe we do go after Kucherov. But hold on. If we all we got to offer him is a 500k more and he's saying, thanks so much, best decision of my life. I thank you for trusting in me, blah, blah, blah. So let's go back to Panarin here. We tried one year 8.7. Let's go one year at 9.25. We have a ton of money, so it's not an issue. Money's not a problem. 9.25 on Artemi Panarin. We have 34.36 million right now, so I'm not worried. Uh, Luke Cunnan as well wanted a little bit more. I don't want to take away his chance to play in the NHL, but last year I only played 12 games. He's been good as depth. He's been an original Starfleet member as well. Love me some Luke Cunnan. And he played in the playoffs two years ago, full-time. Yeah, he got a Stanley Cup ring with us. Let's give Cunnan a little bit more. Come on, Cunnan. One year, 1.1. You know you want to stay in San Fran. Let's go. And yeah, we'll advance another day. Let's go, Artemi. How happy is he to accept this offer? Let's see how happy he is. Easy decision. How easy was the decision? Oh, he rejected. Okay. If Panarin truly rejects at, a, at what he's asking, that's one thing. Yeah, Cunnan's on board, buddy. Don't you worry. One year, 10 million on Panarin. He was making 13 before, so it's not crazy to say 10 million, especially when we'll, we still have over way over 20 million to play with. And Panarin, oh, it was an easy decision. Of course it was. There you go. Panarin's back, one year, 10 million. We still have 25.2 million. And that's it. We'll sign Guliev. We'll still have about we'll still have 20 million plus to play with. And there you go. There you go. The goaltending being cheap is a great positive for us. So didn't not much to do in the resign phase. That's great news. Not really anything to do in the resign phase. Uh we can I customize the arena? No, hey. Eh? I hate that the fans don't have the exact same jerseys. Can we do... Can I? Hold on. Details? No, it's mascot details. There he is. What's his name again, the mascot? Uh, Spot! Data's cat, Spot! Ha <laughs> ha! I love it. I love it. I uh, know, you can't change those details. No, okay, okay, okay. No changes made there. Advance another couple days. And here we are on July 1st. Okay, first thing I want to do is check out extensions, then staff free agency, then player free agency. So, all expiring now. Kevin Fiala, ooh, we definitely want to keep Kevin Fiala here long term. Will it be now or later that we pay him, though? We'll have almost 52 million to play with. He wants 4 by 10. We can probably, maybe, we could even do 5 years. No, actually, well, because he's going to have one more year, it'll be 32. Yeah, let's pay him until he's 36. I think 4 years is fair. So, let's see here. 10.1. What do you mean, like, later on to sign him? I don't know, Fiala, he's an 89 overall, and he would sign for about 8.6. Fiala, 8.6, and he's uh, a point-per-game guy. He's a point-per-game guy, and our, he's a top-six lock. I think it's I think 8.6 would be fair. Even if he came down more, I think 8.6 is fair. He's making 7.8, he's been point-per-game with us. I think four years, to bring him to 36, once his extension kicks in, would be okay. Nine by four, even? We can go 8.75 to keep it a bit more realistic. Swiss Cornerstone. Yeah. 
So 8.58 is 85%. Four years at 8.75 for Kevin Fiala. I think that's a pretty good contract. I think that makes everybody happy. Let's see what Kevin Fiala says to that. Cole Perfetti, what do you want? He's an RFA, so we don't need to rush on him. Yeah, eight years, 19 million, of course. What a, what a crazy world. I know he's a UFA. So we'll come back on Cole Perfetti. That's crazy numbers. Cole Hudson, we could go two-year bridge. Hello, Mr. Avery. Welcome to the stream, my friend. Welcome to the stream. Oh, I forgot to say, I, I got reminded because of uh, Sean Avery's um, uh, donation last week. Don't forget, any donation you make, Puts your name. So if you make two donations, it's two entries. Every donation you make is an entry to have a created player in our next franchise mode series. And if you donate through the PayPal link in the description, that doubles the number of entries that you get. And the more the, the donation is, $5 or more, you get two entries. I think we said $15 or more, you get three entries, etc., etc. So Cole Hudson, we can wait on him as well as an RFA. Um... I mean, in the last, yeah, in the, in the postseason, we got we made it all the way to the Stanley Cup final and got swept by the Devils. Yeah, we're not going to be resigning Pesci, I don't think. But do we keep him for this last season? That's the true question. Do we keep him for one more year? Uh, yeah, we'll come back on Guliev later on. We don't need to rush on him. Uh, Meech played one game. Yeah, could go two years on Hellenius. But again, he's RFA. No need to rush these th these things. Excuse me. Next up, I just want to look at staff free agency. So our coaching staff right now. Um, yeah, I'd probably trade pe Pesci. But the thing is, we're not, we're not in a rush, but I probably would. Uh, so goalie's our head coach. Cochran is our associate. McCutcheon is in here as well. McCarthy, we have a great staff. We have a great staff. So maybe McCarthy leaves. He wants to be more than a goalie coach. And we bring in a veterans goalie coach instead. Maybe. Does anyone not like McCarthy? Low, Yeah, low with McCarthy. Two coaches have low chemistry with McCarthy. So you know what, McCarthy? Two coaches have low chemistry with you. I'm glad you're an A- coach, but you're not happy as a goalie coach. You want to go be a head coach somewhere else. Let's fire McCarthy and allow him to go be a head coach somewhere else. It will help chemistry, and we can bring in a veterans guy to be as um, on the fourth, on the fourth, on the uh, goalie coach. So we'll fire McCarthy. Thank you for your service, my friend Tristan McCarthy. Cam Beats wants to be promoted as well, probably soon. Cam Beats, I feel bad not promoting him. Nathan Cam Beats, you'll get your day, buddy. Your day is coming one one of these days. Now, let's see if we can get a veterans coach here. Matsumoto. McMuffin, here he is. What's his name? Zachary McMuffin. There you go. Head of an English muffin. Love it. Quadruple A batteries. <laughs> I love it. Any coaches who are, uh, any former players? Kopitar, Zuccarello, Backstrom, Crosby, Cogliano, Oshi. But none of them have veterans as their thing, unfortunately. Unless we bring, unless, do we sign Crosby? Do we sign Crosby who just retired with us? Moogley will definitely play, regardless of what happens with Pesci. Yeah, that's more, that's what it is, Doc. We, we released him. We didn't fire him, we released him. Would Crosby want to be our NHL goalie coach? I bet he would, eh? Even though it's not... it's. I wanted to go for a veterans coach. Um, but yeah, Crosby for the... Oh, oh good, good point. Crosby for the AHL. Our AHL goes NHL and Crosby goes AHL. Then promote the other guy. True! Just that he's not a veterans guy. That's the thing. Well, does it really make a big difference if your goalie coach is veterans or not? I don't know. I think I'd rather go storyline for that one. Hey, all the AGMs agree, so let's do it. So, Sidney Crosby. There's a Hobbs in there? Okay, I see you. Crosby will get hired for AHL. Actually, you know what? What I'm going to do is hire him for AH, for NHL goalie coach to make sure that he signs. Because I could offer him AHL goalie... Uh, a, 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 I could offer him AHL head coach. And then he'll say, this doesn't... is suited to my skill set or whatever other garbage. So, I'll hire him as the NHL goalie coach. Then demote him to the AHL. And then promote the AHL head coach to the NHL staff. There you go. So we'll give him eight years at uh, 87, 874K for 87. Sidney Crosby just retired with us here in San Francisco. Uh, real storyline would be probably the Penguins give him a contract, but we know that that won't happen in the game. So there you go. All right, so there's staff taken care of for now. Now we go into free agency and see who's available. Abs, sorry, but what position are we looking to fill? 
That is the question. So on four words, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. That's our twelve right there. Not even including Kapanen, Sturm, uh, even Haikila. Haikila is definitely going to be in there. So the forwards are pretty full. If we go on defense, one, two, three, four, and then five, six would be Mugli and fill in the blank, right? Is that what we said? Mugli and fill in the blank? Am I remembering that correctly? Because Lu unless Ludwig's ready right away. Oh no, Guliev! Ah, Guliev! Guliev and Mugli, that's who we're saying. Yeah, 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 yeah. What am I saying? Maybe a bottom six center? Well, the overalls don't look great, but here's the thing. The first, one, two, three, four, five, six. There's your top six, and Lysel simulates quite well. Your third line is Stenberg, Hellenius, who could be an 81, 82 by time season starts, and Rubrik, who could be an 81, 82 by, by time season starts. Then your fourth line is Afanasev, Beck, and um, I don't know whoever else. It would be like Kapanen, kind of whatever. James, bonjour, data, bonjour. With the show coming out tomorrow, I now think a cool option to consider for this game would be uh, the Blue Jays. Get We get Joey Votto into the Data 72 Hall of Fame. Ooh, James, I see you. I see you. Um, next Tuesday, already, yeah, it's coming up. Today's Thursday, so in five days, we'll be live with MLB The Show 24. It'll be a franchise overview guide. Just, not a guide, just like a, a walkthrough of how things look. And then the week after, we'll start our series. Romanov and uh, Mugli are on the third, yeah. Yeah, we're definitely trading Pesci. So, sorry, let me count the defense again. One, Cole Hudson one. Let's say Guliev two. Second pair, Ramirez Romanov. Third pair, Mugli and Pesci. Or Mugli and Ludwig. Or we make some sort of trade or a free agent signing. We could trade Pesci for a top four guy. That's also a possibility. Let's now look at free agency finally and our goaltending is set. So if you've got anybody, maybe it's a bottom six forward. When we know the team Tuesday or it's just a, ge just a general franchise overview, then a vote. You're exactly right, Hobbs. The latter. Let's see free agency. I'm sure Kutrov's there. No, Kutrov is not there. All right. That makes me feel a lot better then. Whew, makes me feel a lot better. But we see Jason Robertson has dropped to free agency. Ivan Barbashev is still here. Yeah, we're still alive. Barbashev as a Russian player would be helpful in there. Uh, doesn't say, whoa, what? Only 52 points last year and he wants how much money? Okay, okay, okay. Chef Jeff, I know that um, Caleb's going to be saying, let's go Chef Jeff. Ovechkin's in here as well. We just had a great one-year run with Pavelski and Crosby. Do we give 42-year-old Ovi one last shot at Lord Stanley? He, yeah, he went to Arizona, I remember that. He only played two games, scoring two points. He has not scored. He has not been to. A, he has not been out of the first round since winning the Stanley Cup in 2018. Wow. Jays can't uh, Justin Turner play third base? Now, where does Ovechkin go, really, though? Right. That's the problem. If our top six is the top six we set, and the third line is Rubric, Hellenius, and Stenberg. Where does Ovechkin really go, everyone? That's what we have to be honest about. Where does Ovechkin go? Trevor Moore has two teams already offered in him. I'm very happy to see that. Offering him contracts. I'm happy to see that. Same thing for Marchenko, though. Where do they go? But if Ovechkin goes in the third line, then who of Lysel, Hellenius, or Stenberg gets traded or gets put down on the fourth line, which I don't want? Doesn't really fit. Maybe it's a deadline thing. Oh, that's a good idea. Ah, how about that, ladies and gentlemen? Ovechkin a deadline move. Because signing him now means pushing out a... a, a um, Barabanov one year. No, he wants three years and two teams are interested in him. Trade Stenberg? Uh, I don't know. March, he's a sniper who scored 16 goals last year. No, no, no. Don't be fooled. He is not a sniper. Do not be fooled. Now, Rubric, he needs, he needs top, he, if he's not third line, he might even be second line. I don't think Rubric can be AH. We already buried him in the OHL for too long. I think we're in a, at the trade deadline. At the trade deadline, we figure it out, but we got to at least give our rookies a chance to breathe. Oh, Barabanov, sorry. I was looking at Barbashev. Barabanov, one year. He's 34. Uh, 59 points last year with the Blackhawks. Again, interesting as a Russian for the na for the nationality flexibility. Yeah, we'll trade Pesci, or just get rid of whatever. We'll, Pesci will leave, but 
I don't think we can sign a, play, a, a top six or top nine forward until we see play, player growth. If Rubric grows and Lysel grows and Hellenius grows, we can't have these guys playing fourth line minutes. I think Michelli is my favorite option. Uh, Michelli. He wants 5 by 6.7, 86 overall. 50 points last year, 24 the year before. Ish, scary. But 50 points with 11.48 of ice time. At least there's that. Okay, sorry. What we really want to look at is the defense. Defense out here. So Hannafin, York, Hedman, White Cloud, Bolzuk, Gavrikov, CC. Uh, any RFA trade target? Let's see. The Only the RFAs. Let's see. Iserman, Demidov, McNeil, Haggins, Lev Levshinov, Reinbacher, Quinn, Kiviharu. A lot of players out here. They need someone between 82 84 for the forwards. But it would probably be more of a fourth line. I, I'd, I'd consider an 81 overall guy who can play third, fourth line type of thing. A bottom six, 81 82 guy, maybe. Uh, if we look at forwards, uh, UFA forwards, and scroll down to the 81 82 range, uh, we're looking at guys like this the Beauvilliers of the world, the Duchesnes of the world, maybe Duchesne, a, a, a veteran in there. But bottom six potentially likely regresses even a little bit more. Ah. Pull you Yarvi, former Starfleet officer. Reinbacher, you want Reinbacher, eh? Jonathan Zouin, Data 782 Hall of Famer, Jonathan Zouin. Levchinov for Pesci and Picks. Hmm. And Reinbacher is another Austrian. But Cole's in. Marc Chasseau could be someone here, but he wants 3.3. Had a good season last year. Sims well, but 37 at the bottom six potential, that's scary. Could be a 79 by the time season starts. Hmm. Okay, we were saying... Um, Levchinov, Levchinov. What's he done? Oof, he's looking great in Philadelphia. But if he's, if, if he's able to be... Um, Signed by them. I think for an RFA, we have to wait a little bit and see who's not being able to be signed. Is it crazy to suggest moving Stenberg anyway and signing a veteran 3C with Rubric and Hellenius? If we trade out Stenberg, who would we bring in Who would we bring in as third line center? I don't know. Stenberg, I want to see full a full year of third line from him unless it's really something is forcing. Yeah, well, now if Gerard and Pesci are out, that definitely opens the door for McIntyre. Let's also consider the trade market. Let's also consider the trade market. So on defense, if the first pair is whatever, Hudson... If the top four is already locked with Hudson, Ramirez, uh, Guliev, um, I maybe Romanov? Stenberg and Rubrik can't both be in the third line? Oh, back. Okay, yeah, yeah. Back, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um... Third pair would be Romanov and... Either the third pair is Romanov and Mugli, or Romanov's in the top four, and the third pair is Mugli and someone else. But Mugli is lefty, righty. He is left-handed, so he's probably left. Maybe a right D, who could swap up third, a, third, a second third pair right D. That's it. But I don't want anyone long, long term because we have our defensive prospects getting in, coming up soon enough. Yeah, Pesci, it's more that he hasn't been great, he's regressing, and he's gonna be he's an expiring UFA who would be, he would lose anyways. But in theory, and also he's an American, which doesn't help the nationalities, but in theory, we could keep Pesci just as a placeholder and let him walk to free agency. We could do that. I think Stenberg has more room to grow versus Lysel if we have nice time. I wait a year or two before moving him. I think I agree with you there. So if I go for a right D here, right D, who is right D, whoa, whoa, let's say he's at least 81 overall, and not higher than, let's say 81 to 85, right-handed 81 to 85 D, 42 results come up, is one of those guys, David Reinbacher, what did he do last season in Montreal, nothing crazy. Yeah, the Americans are kind of forcing Pesci out as well. Because if we have an injury, that's a problem. That's that's another reason Pesci should leave. Yeah, I agree. Now I no more. Pesci is definitely gone. We need flexibility for injuries. Kalen Addison, there is the wild wish. The wild wish. Kalen Addison, 58-point season last year. Now in San Jose. 
Uh, let's see. Any interesting contracts? Year check. Carlo. I prefer not to pay too, too much. Someone who's not too old. It's like, I don't know. The younger guys, the team. I don't know if a team wants to. And, and, and third pair. We can't have an immediately guy on third pair as well. So let's say someone who's at least like 25. Now it brings it down to 33. 33 options for us. Your check's affordable. Andy's check, yes. But having him on the third pair wouldn't make a lot of sense either. Unless Romanov goes third pair and your check plays top four. Uh, let's go back to twenty. adding 24-year-olds. Your check's 24, right? Uh, yes, here he is. But would the Blue Jackets even be open to that? Uh, we'll just step with them. They're sellers. They're sellers. I mean... One, two, three, four, five, six. I don't think they move your check. I don't think so. It would be interesting, but I don't think they move them. For an aging Pesci? No. Or probably a third... Yeah, so if you bring in someone, it's probably for second pair more, more often than not. Back to 25. In free agency, those guys all want 5 million. That's the thing. If we can find someone who's under that. First, let's take a look first in free agency. And see. Uh, anything is real? I don't know anything. I don't know anything. Uh, let's see. Or with Vegas in the league. Ah, I see. Um, White Cloud could be a guy in free agency, but he wants money, right? Last season, who's making four point eight? These guys are making crazy money. Brock Faber, eighty one overall though. Uh, he's gonna play top four. I prefer. He's not the Brock Faber of the real world. Was that Wierenski? I don't think. Did we see Wierenski? Oh, in Columbus, maybe. Was that Wierenski in Columbus? Let me go back to Boquist. He'll show us. Uh, yes, it is. Back in Columbus. That's great. Wierenski back in the Blue Jackets. That's funny. <laughs> oh, boy. Are we just leaving the, our number two in the AHL? Uh, it's because... It's not that we're leaving the AHL, so we're gonna, probably going to leave him unsigned. He's a 79 overall. And if he stays 79, I don't want to bring him in just yet to play limited minutes. I'd prefer to have him come in when he's ready to be a top six guy. Maybe we go after White Cloud. We go after White Cloud, maybe? He's a Canadian, though, right? I mean, we have no more other Canadians now that uh, gerard has gone. 88 shot blocking, 90 stick checking. He did well with big minutes last year. He's not an offensive guy. But he throws hits and blocks shots, no? Oh, actually, wait. Hold on. 20 and 14. Actually, I in 13 games. 67 games. Yeah, he blocks and he hits. I don't know. If he's any... The, ga the game saying he's NHL ready... What, what matters is his role. If the game says he's NHL ready, that's if he's 77 overall or up, the game will say NHL ready with his NHL ETA. For is he actually NHL ready? You have to look at his role. And his role, Ludwig Eriksson, is top 6D. So, you know what? That changes things. At the same time, I don't know, he's 17. Do we want an a all-rookie pair of, er of Eriksson and Moogly on the third pair? The all rookie pairing, and then Romanov on the, on the on the second. I don't know if we want that either. And Damon Hunt's Canadian as well, yeah. Now we can't give Ludwig a few games. Either he's in or he's out, because we can't send him back to Europe either. If we sign him, he plays. True JP, it is the next generation. Let me take another look at free agency here. Romanov movie third pair is what I'm leading. Let me take another look at the UFAs here. Just actually, who's everybody again? That sounds dangerous. We want the youth. White Cloud's the best guy out here as the UFAs on the right side. Cody CC, oof. Oof. Clifton 82. That's why I wasn't super looking into moving Sam Girard. But for the second overall pick, I understand it was worth it, but I wasn't really looking into moving him. He wants big money here, eh? White Cloud, four years of 5.1. Bit too rich for my blood. Bit too rich. White Cloud, I agree. Erickson is a defensive defenseman, yes. Crazy thought, we could just sim to September and decide that. You know what? Yes. 
let's not do the defense now then. If we're not signing a free agent, then forget it. Pesci is still signed on, so let's make a decision in September. Uh, okay, so if we're not signing anybody else... Uh, and yeah, we'll check the trade block before we simulate, but that, we'll probably say that's it for that. Looking by anyone we want to sign here for the AHL. We'll go, I don't know, Haltonen? Yeah, we could definitely get Haltonen here. Casper Haltonen? Yeah, 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 of course. Throw him in the AHL, why not? Another Finn in the system. Let's give him a max two-way deal. There you go, if he wants it, he wants it. That's true, we gotta spend money as well. We gotta spend a little bit of money. Lu who's this guy? Skyler Lucic. Five-star shooting! He's American. Skyler, let's get him in the system. Skyler Lucic. What in the world? Let's get him on board. Crazy. I love those five-star shooting prospects. Anybody else? Uh, probably not. And on defense, Skyler. Uh, both. Could get a seventh defenseman. It wouldn't be a crazy thing to get a seventh defenseman. Because we have Hunt, who's Canadian. We could throw someone else in there. How Svozil, Stanislav Svozil as a Czech player. That helps. Yeah, why not? Svozil. For some flexibility. He only wants 900k. Yeah, why not? One year. I'll give you one year, one mil, one way for Svozil. Why not? Lambos, the problem is he's two overall less and he is Canadian. So that doesn't help with Damon Hunt also being Canadian. I want someone else as depth to be a different nationality. So Svozil, come on in, buddy. Uh, Cornet. Yeah, we can get Cornet in here. Ronald Cornet. Fifth round pick of the Predators. He's 22. Toss him in. They all want two years. Of, they all want the 1.2 million. I don't know why. Max two year, two way deal. And the goaltending, anything stand up for the goaltending? Uh, no. Camesso at 85. Rock going to sign a new starter. Son of René. There you go. Love it. Uh, yes. Trade blocks, then we advance. Trade blocks, then we advance. Oh, and then I'm going to randomize the. Um, Le I know, I saw Kniazev. Legend cheating heal. Vas I know, Vasilevsky's there. Mikola's already in 82. I don't know, guys. Mikola is the future of our team. Yeah, Erickson will be ideal in the future. That's true. He's already Mikola's already in 82. I want Mikola to get a chance to be a starter. I don't want him to be a backup for the next five years. Mikola to Vasilevsky. And you know what? Vasilevsky doesn't simulate very well, usually, in franchise mode history. Ooh, ooh, ooh. ship out Greaves, trade Kosa. Ooh, ooh, relax. We're, we're going to run the three-headed monster and decide around the halfway point. Uh, what the... Uh, trade blocks. Let's do the trade blocks now. We, we still got to sign Guliev. That should get us to the cap floor. That shouldn't be an issue. Uh, yes, okay. So Tommy Novak on the block here in Nashville. Two years of 4.1. That's very interesting. Tommy Novak. I love Tommy Novak. Fits the second line as well. He is American, though. Yeah. Okay, keep Tommy Novak in mind. Coyotes sorting by... Sorting by overall, I suppose. Noel Nord. Penguins legend. Noel Nord. Do you have a picture yet? No, eh? Um, sorry, let me go back here. Lindholm. Gerard Ord in the trade block. No! Why does... They're buyers! They're buy Now they're sellers. They're buyers at the draft. Now they're sellers on July 1st. What a joke! <sighs> I try to do the thing and the game just breaks it apart. It's true. For the forward, now that Moore is gone, that's true. Get him back. But we don't have the value to get him back. Unless you trade Pesci there again. Yeah, I'm not sure. love Novak. Not sure if it makes sense. Uyghur on the block in uh, Calgary. Uh, no one there. Dallas. Pionk. Right hand D there. Pionk. Three years at 5.3. Oof. Offensive defenseman who scores 20 points. I guess he forgot. Yeah, I don't know. AHL last year even? I don't know. Neil Pionk, you're not making me feel good, buddy. Probably not Neil Pionk. I don't think so. Pesci to bring Gerard back, maybe? <laughs> so keep Pionk in mind. Axel Sandin Palika, hold on a second! Hold on a second! Axel Sandin Palika is on the trade block here. Five star puck skills with 99 deking, passing, and puck control. Whoa. Whoa. 20 points in 82 games last year. 
playing 16-14, so maybe you know, put him on the power play. He's an offensive defense, we have a lot of those, but add, you know, throw in another Swede. The pr only issue I would potentially see is that he can't play with Ludwig. But we can just separate them. There's only one. Of the, he would be the only Swede on defense right now. So we'll continue to do our due diligence. But Axel Sandin Palika on the block is very interesting. Let's continue here. That buy me that. We'll come back to Detroit and to uh, maybe even Boston. Well, probably not Boston. We're getting Sandin Palika. But Florida Montour Ekblad Labank Forsling and Zadarov. Aaron Ekblad for one year could be something interesting in the top four. That's also interesting. Also a right D. We're saying right D. Aaron Ekblad. Big 6'4 Ekblad. Legend with the Penguins. Eats those big minutes. I could see Aaron Ekblad being a guy that makes sense for us as well. More trade value, but he'd be more of a lock in the top four. Montour, I don't know. Two years at 34 has the, the higher, you know, like, just a higher chance of regression. But Ekblad, I don't know. If we get Ekblad, the Nash, Gavin, the nationality rule is that we can only have one player of a nationality on a line or defensive pairing. So on the first line, you can't have two Canadians, you can't have two Americans, you can't have two Swedes, nothing else. On a defensive pairing, you got to have two different nationalities. That's our rule here in this franchise mode series. As the San Francisco Starfleet going into the Star Trek lore where the United Federation of Planets, blah, blah, blah. So if we get Axel Sandin Palika... We might have Romanov still in the top four. If we get Ekblad, then he could play top four and Romanov plays third pair. Nas I, we, I don't think it really applies with the goalies in the nationality rule. We've said that because they never they don't play together, but... Same. True. Thank you, Dice. Um, I don't know about the goalies. Maybe we could... I don't know. Anyways. Uh, Lindgren. Also, he's lefty, though. Lindgren's out there. Canadians, goalies... Yeah, we've, we've said goalies don't count. I, I want to do it if we can, but if it really doesn't work because of how much goalies are, like a revolving door, then that's understandable. Forsling... We saw Forsling too, right? You know, yeah, we, yeah, that's exactly it. Exactly what Andrew just said. It's never been an issue, but we have tried to keep them as different nationalities overall. Uh, Bushnevich on the block, and so is Casey Middlestad here in St. Louis. Bushnevich uh, fits the fourth line for our coach. Great. As a Russian. Now, we can't bring in a top six forward right now. Tampa has Duclair on the block. Tur That's funny. He's not even in the in, on Tampa in the trade in these rosters, but he found his way there like in the real world. Toronto has Tavares on the block. Um, we got rid of Annan after bringing in Corpus Salo. True, true, true. Actually, last four years had a finished goal. Yeah, interesting. I love the stats. Play for the HL. Yeah, AHL, we don't really think about that. Well, uh, Tippett, Wilson, Kuznetsov. Look at Tippett as an 89 overall. Oh my goodness. And Winnipeg. Okay, so it comes down to getting back Sam Girard from Boston. <laughs> or we can get um, one of the Florida defensemen. Can Forsling play? He's left. I prefer right. In Ekblad or Montour. So here's the thing. If we get Ekblad or Montour... Our third defensive pair is Romanov and Mugli. But if we get Axel Sandin Palika, Romanov probably plays on the second pair, and the third pair will be Mugli and Palika. So I don't think we'll get Gerard back, I gotta be honest. <laughs> I, it wouldn't work for the storyline. I wouldn't want to trade him at the draft and get him back a week later. No, no. So it, it's Palika or one of the Florida defensemen. So Palika, three-star defense is the one thing that's 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 kind of scaring me. His overall is really boosted by the five-star puck skills. Okay, in fact, no, there's no rule for that. I think if you retain salary, you can't do that. Not, no, what's the if you no if you sign a player in free agency, you can't trade him back to the same team. I think that's what it is. Uh, Ludwig, I don't think he's gonna play this year unless he sees a big growth by September. I don't think he's gonna play. So Sandin Palika, I gotta admit. As much as it fits with the right D, with the youth, with the potential and all that, let's be honest, the 5-star puck skills and the 95 durability is really boosting his overall. Because really, he has all defensive attributes between 81 and 85, 3-star defense, 70s for the shooting accuracy, and in his first year in the NHL, we played 16 minutes, he scored 20 points, four of them coming on the power play. But, 
devil's advocate on the other side as well. 51 points in 81 games in the AHL, playing on the fourth line wing. <laughs> Could be a bit of a vanity, a vanity um, overall. Meanwhile, in Florida, we get Ekblad as just a quick band-aid so that we can bring in our youth in the future with, um, with Ludwig coming into the top six soon enough. Uh, we could give Sandin Plik a third pair in power play, but we also... No, not really, because Guliev needs power play. Hudson needs power play. Um, other forwards... Uh, our third line wingers need power play. I don't know if Sandin Plik would find his way even onto there. We'd try, but I don't know. Meanwhile, Montour and Ekblad could be one or two year band-aids, and it would allow Romanov to play in the third pair with, um, with, uh, Mugli. Lengthen our decor. So our defense right now... If you look at our decor, sorting by overall, our D our first pair is going to be Hudson and probably Guliev. I would thank you, Golden, voting for Ekblad as well. Do we want to pay that value for a one year band aid? True. Also, that's a lot of trade value for a one year band aid. I wouldn't say a band aid. It's just a one year filler. One year filler. Um, we'll call him the Snake. That's that's a good nickname there, Joe. I like that. I also love the storyline of Hudson uh, Ekblad. What's the storyline there? Are we going to sell the farm to buy in a rental? It wouldn't be the farm. It would be Pesci and something low enough. But I see what you're saying. The trade value does play into it as well. So sorry, Hudson and Guliev probably on the top pair. Then Ramirez and fill in the blank on the second pair. Romanov, Ekblad, or Montour. Or yeah, probably just Romanov or Ekblad. And the third pair is Mugli with... Either Romanov who gets bumped down or Sandin Palika. Veteran oh veteran mentor storyline. I see, I see. Is there a D in free agency looking for a one year deal? There no nah, there they want create it's it's White Cloud. The the top defensemen available are White Cloud and CC, and they both want like four years at five million each. So it would be like an eighty one overall type guy if we got a one year contract. I'd prefer to make a trade for Pesci moving out and bringing in one of those guys. I think Sandin Palika fits the organizational needs better. But I think as a defenseman, Ekblad is better. But, I don't know. The Red Wings want to move him out. Yeah, we have so much cap space. Do we go for the youth? Because it is a lot of trade value. Although Ekblad is better, it's a lot of trade value for, Palika to, for Ekblad to come in. While if we move Pesci... From getting both, yeah. The thing stopping us from getting both is just not enough roster spots. We have five defensemen, we only have room for one more. So Pesci could go straight up for Palika, and you know what? It makes sense. The Panthers are conservative buyers, and they don't want Pesci. The Red Wings are buyers, and they want Pesci. So you know what? I think it's Palika. As much as I agree that Ekblad is the better choice, I think Palika is the guy. Yeah, Ekblad could be a deadline move. Good idea there, Cheating Heel, as well. So I'll give you Brett Pesci. Palika, you want to give up on him? Fine, but you're going to have to give me a pick. And JP, you read my mind exactly as I said that. You're going to give me a fourth round pick back for doing you a favor to dump him, since you seem to not want him anymore. So, you know what? Maybe I can get a third if I retain salary, even. We have a ton of salary space. A cap space. I'll take a third and I'll retain 50%. Sorry. Uh, Erickson ASP can't happen, which means you're talking about Hudson ASP... And Ericsson Marchand. If, well... Oh, oh, sorry. I keep pressing the button. But ASP could be a, a, a third pair guy for the long term as well. He doesn't have to be a, he doesn't have to be a future third, uh, second pair guy. ASP, if he's stuck in an 81, I don't mind having him on the third pair. So let's try this. 50% retained. Well, why not? We have tons of... We have, we're barely at the cap floor. We're barely at the cap floor. I don't think... I, I'd be shocked if we get a second round pick here. Second round pick, yeah, two values too far off. Actual Axel Sandin, the Snake Palika. Let's get a third. Let's get a better third from Washington, supposedly here. What do you say here? Is no values too far off? No, no, that wouldn't uh, wouldn't happen. Detroit's third. Ah, that's exactly. I I read the, the I guys. I know this game. I know franchise. For the second they didn't want to do the third from Washington. They didn't want to do, but the third from Detroit, the one that I thought they would do. They do. On behalf of the Detroit Red Wings organization, I accept your trade offer and I'll see you out on the ice. Thank you, Detroit. Brett Pesci, an original member of Starfleet. That's the third original Starfleet member that we lose tonight. It's tough. It's the new generation. It's the next generation indeed. 
Through five full seasons with Starfleet, he gets his Stanley Cup ring. He was huge in our Stanley Cup run la like in 2027. He was injured. He came in. Two goals. One game winner. Plus 11 in 11 games. With Starfleet, he was Mr. Iron Man pretty much for the first little bit. So 82 times 3 plus 80 plus 74. In 400 games played, uh, age, performance, and organizational needs. And because of the nationalities and all that. So in 400 games, let's see. Pesci scored 118 points in 400 games. And he was a plus... Minus two... He was a plus 67. We'll take it. Brett, my, my friend, good luck in Detroit. Thank you for everything. Good luck with the Red Wings. They're buyers. They're going all the way. They want to try and go on a run. All right. I wish them all the best. Goodbye, Pest. I mean, Pesci. Is this... Who did, did I think, Yeah, Willinder is also on the block here. Lefty, William Willinder. Okay. 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 So, Axel Sandin Palika, welcome to the team. We retain salary to help Detroit as buyers. Plus, we need to get to the cap floor. We just got, we're going to advance a few days. Wait on Crosby and on the, on the other contracts we sent out. Oh, hold on, the scouts, the scouts. And then we'll be able to give uh, Guliev his extension and do the draft class and then call it a day. Oof, quite an exciting offseason, I do have to say. Uh, scouts. Any who are low, so NLA, QMJHL, USA maybe. Oh, there's not much for the A for the A rated scouts here. Uh, oh, yeah, nothing. No one, they're not A plus anywhere. Maybe WHL for this guy? Yeah, Crosby as head coach, and as AHL head coach, we're looking at that. WHL. We can move out this guy. B. Oh, we want wow, we want to keep Mark Stahl, though. Oh, come on, Mark. We love you. Okay, Monroe's gonna move out then. B A plus will be moved out for uh, A minus A. Yeah, the, the free agency was just ridiculous. Uh, WHL, here we go. A minus A instead of B minus A plus, right? That's what it was. Lance Monroe, you're out of here. Mark Stahl, we gotta keep him. Just, I, I just love keeping veteran players. Uh, no, no, Cro we had Crosby last season, then he retired. We had Crosby and Pavelski at the, when we picked him up at the deadline. Okay, let's just start advancing a few days now. Let's see it. Sidney Crosby is on board. Let's go. Let's, okay, hold on. No, thank you, Ottawa. Okay, so coaching staff. We'll make him our AHL head coach. So demote him to AHL goalie coach for a moment. Cam Beats, welcome. You've done your time. He's done his service in the AHL. Welcome to the NHL. Now an NHL goalie coach. And Crosby becomes our AHL head coach. 77% chemistry in the AHL and 60 in the NHL. Hopefully it continues to grow, but great morale for most of the top, top guys here. Just Cam Beats is going to learn to learn his, his place, I guess, a little bit. His place in the world. He's going to find his place in the world. Let's keep advancing a few more days now, then we'll get Guliev signed in a, in a moment, in about a week maybe. Advancing, Carl Genze, scout, good. Svozel on board, there we go for the depth defense slash third pair. Uh, cash offer was most generous, no problem, Stanislav, happy to help. Haltonen and Lucic, yes, Lucic with a five-star shooting, and Cornet all on board. Let's go. That's exactly what we wanted to see, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Kevin Fiala extends as well at 8.75 million, love it. Good news all around, good news for everybody here. Uh, let's advance one more day. All right, so now it's July 7th. Let's see if we can offer Guliev's contract. We're not trying to get him down crazy low. Just wanted to lower it a little bit. Our face here, Guliev. Let's see. Guliev, you are down to wanting. Yeah, still about the same. HL goalie coach instead of assistant. How do you mean? Instead of an assistant coach, you want a goalie coach in the AHL? Yeah, everyone wants those depth players. They love those depth players. Sorry, John, you're you're watching a bit late. John just said, let's go for Ekblad, but we're, you're watching a little bit in the past. So we'll go two years on uh, Guliev. I don't think his demand really came down much. Let's try and get him down to 5.5. Let's advance a little bit more. It's not that I want him... To, I don't want to jip him. It's just that he's asking for a lot after only two seasons for, for a bridge contract. I'd want to do like 2 by 5 maybe. 2 by 4.8 or so. Everybody wants Cunning. They love him. 
Okay, four more days later, we let him stew a little. We we'll let him stew a little bit. Uh, okay, RFAs. Guliev. Uh, the only reason I don't want to sign Guliev long term, Gen Z, is because if we sign him for eight years now, when he wants his contract at 31, he's going to want like 11 million. I'd rather sign him for two years now than in eight years later, so that it's essentially we're getting him for 10 years until he's 33. You got to play the system like that in franchise mode, unfortunately. All right, so down to 5.4. Now I can send him an offer. I'm a bit more okay with that. 5.42, excuse me. 425 times 85%, that's 4.61. So two years at 4.75 for a 23-year-old who had a solid couple of seasons. Now we got to see if he can continue the pace in like full-time top pair type of minutes. That's a solid bridge deal for him, I think. Two years, 4.75. Let's see if he likes it. And Hunt, what's going on with you, Hunt? Just, yeah, you, come on, sign the contract, buddy. I'll give you a max two-way deal for one year. Come on, Damon, don't play like that. Uh, do they win the Fiala trade? Not yet. Not yet, I don't think. He's been... Oh, maybe if it's player for player, but organizationally, the Kings are doing a lot more with Fiala than they would have done with Favor, I think. Let's see what Guliev says to that offer. And even Hunt. What do they say to those offers? Uh, Guliev, extremely happy to accept the offer. Love it. And Reg I will not accept the two-way deal. End of story! <sighs> well, excuse me, Damon. I'm sorry. Ridiculous. Uh, that's about it. That's about it, eh? We can sim to the beginning of the season now. So my, yeah, not a lot of people out. A lot of the RFAs are... Yeah, all the RFAs are gone. All the big RFAs are gone. That makes sense. Uh, Bertuzzi, Duchesne. There's a lot of depth guys out there. Let's just go to the draft class now. Was not expecting... <laughs> Uh, settings. So we want to make sure we randomize our draft class. I'm just going to pull up random number 1 to 100 to the worst team. <laughs> End of story. <laughs> Trade with the worst team then. End of story. Ridiculous. I'm giving you a million dollars. A million dollars. You know what I would do for a million dollars? HL. You should hire an HL goalie coach to help develop our goalies. The thing is, they're special. I'll show you in a second, Josh. We'll look at that in a second. So last year we had a low high draft class, random number one to 100. If it's, you have to trust me on what I get here. One to 20 is low, 21 to 79 is medium, 80 to 100 is high. So generated prospect quality, when I randomize the number one to 100, I get 22. So just barely it's medium. And for, sorry, for draft class quality, it's gonna be medium. Oh, sorry, so last year was, was it medium low? Medium, I forget what it even was, because I was looking at, sorry, shot frequency. So draft class quality will be medium. Generated prospect quality, randomizing a number, I get 30. So medium, medium. It'll be a medium, medium class next year. All right, 22 and 30 are the two numbers that I get. Close, close, Joe. <laughs> Guessing 37. So if I want to get an AHL goalie coach, they're essentially going to be goalie specialty, but they'll be so bad that it won't be worth it. They'll be like a D- coach. So if I want an AHL assistant whose specialty is goalies, my options are D-, D, E, just tough. No, 1 to 20 is low. 21 to 79 is medium. Rolling 22 just after fail like sense. True. And 22, that's my number. Two twos never lose, baby. So that's why I, I just, it's not even worth it to sign a goalie coach. He's going to have E for everything. That's, I really don't care about the AHL goalie. I, I prefer to keep that spot open so that I can play musical chairs with a broken coaching system. With A teaching? I'll look for you, Josh. I'll look for you. They don't even give an option for goalie coach. It's ridiculous. Does anyone have A teaching? A plus teaching even for this guy. D minus the A plus teaching. Votek Kristek. All right, let's see. Does it matter for goalie coach? Yeah, well, does it? No one can really say. I feel like it's so impossible to really know anything. Let's go. AHL goalie coach. Let's see. He's going to say this doesn't suit my, my fit. I'd rather stay unemployed. Okay. 
Now let's advance to next season at this point. Finally, sim to next season. Whew, what an off season. We're just about wrapping it up now, ladies and gentlemen. I thank you for your generous financial compensation. I accept. This is the most AI answer I've ever seen. Oh, sorry, it was medium low. Now it's me medium medium. Thank you, Joe. A hey, Chichu getting offered to us. I have found that it does, but I understand why people don't believe it. Yeah, yeah, it's it's, it's, it's all I find it's all anecdotal. It's tough to really figure out for real. We're closing on the two-hour mark, so we'll look at wrapping it up once we get through the uh, off-season here. We'll look at the lines. We'll think about combinations. We'll look at who grew over the off-season, and then uh, we'll start thinking about next week's episode. Damon Hunt has been offered. Okay, yeah, we're we're gonna let him let him walk. No spending. No, I don't think we have to with Guliev. I'll I'll pause here, JP. But I don't think we have to with Guliev signing on. Uh, so Damon Hunt has been offered a, a contract. Yeah, pff, end of story. You want? I was offering you a million dollars, and you said end of story. No. So okay, no. Remind me in six days, and we're gonna let the predators take him. I'm not matching that. You're a bum. No, we're not matching it. He disrespected us. Can I please stop? Okay, there we go. Uh, let, let's double check on the salary cap. Why would we match it, doggy? He disrespected us. Uh, we're just there in the salary cap, eh? Okay, I could sign... Just to really make sure we're okay, I'll sign somebody. We should be fine. End of story. <laughs> Who's a veteran who wants our money? David Perron? Voila. Félicitations. There, what? There are five teams interested? Yeah, David, bienvenue. We're coming here. Not matching. <laughs> Everyone in the, in the chat, we're not matching it. End of story. All right, David Perron, I'm going to give you one year, one way. The money I was going to give to Hunt, I'm going to give it to David Perron instead. Let's give him one year, five million, just to make sure that we're going to be okay with the salary. One year, five million. Pour David Perron. Cinq millions. Cinq millions pour David Perron. Voilà. Okay. On continue. Let's keep going towards the start of the preseason. Let's see how excited he is. I was extremely happy and I'm truly humbled. Thank you, David. Uh, no. There's my last chance to match it. Continue. End of story. No way, no how. Yay, I get to have a one-way contract, but I just lost $260,000. Who needs to put food on the table, send my kids to college? Who needs $260,000? What a joke. End of story. <laughs> nah, Josh, trust me. Trust me. We're going to stick with our system. I don't want to fire a coach to bring in uh, an E-rated or a D-rated guy who just has A-plus teaching. Our, our current staff has good attributes already. Now he would have been probably seventh D there, Dice. I don't know. Maybe he would have been in the NHL. But, too bad. He disrespected us. <laughs> Skippy. Okay, let's see who grew now. Big moment. What we really want to see is overall growth. I want to see Hellenius and Rubric both at least 81 overall. Uh, I'd like to see Lysel as... 84 would be great, but 83 is still okay. Let it go, Joshua. Let it go. AHL goalie coach, we don't need... It. It's not going to change the world for us. Um, what else do I want to see? And I want to see Guliev maybe a little bit of growth. Hudson maybe a little bit as well. Svoz will probably take the spot as well. Yeah, that's true. Let's do it. Edit lines. Let's see. Let's see the growth. I'm looking. Okay, nice. Nice. Okay, I like what I see here. So, Panarin, Lindholm, Fial, that's fine. Rubrik's up to an 82 overall. Love it. Lysel's still an 83. Helenia's still an 80. A he ain't no growth for you. <laughs> I'd like to see... Uh, no. Defense. Hudson's up to an 88. Nice. Gulev's still an 82. Palika, 82. He grew up an 81. Okay. Uh, and goalies, Kosa, 85. Mikul up to an 84. Nice. Nice. Okay, so first let's make sure we go to the roster moves. And here comes Mighty Joe with the 699. Big things for this next generation, and the new chair is involved. Great stream, great chat, great community. Let's go, Starfleet. And McIntyre gets the A. You know what? After we do the lines, we're doing the A's, the captaincies. Joe, Mighty Joe with the Mighty 699. Thank you, my friend. That will add another entry for the created player. That now gives you 
officially that gives you your hold on uh, that gives you your fifth entry, but I'll add some more for your previous donations. But officially, it gives you your fifth entry. Who's our captain, Elias Lindholm? So let's go back through it forwards. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Sturm is thirteenth form. No, I want Mikola up. I want to see Mikola seventy nine. He's still 77! Haikila. Sorry, not Mikola. Haikila. He's 21. He's got to get a chance in the preseason or something. Even Kapanen I want up. Sturm can probably go down as a 78, is he? Yeah, Sturm can go down for now. Um, defense. Yeah, Mugli, ah, Mugli still 77. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Really, Svozel will be 7. And Mugli will be 6. Yeah. And goaltending, Greaves at an 81 is third goalie. Oh, we can't bring him up right now. Trade back for Hunt and give him the C. That guy has moxie. <laughs> so if Greaves is going to come back up, we got to send somebody down. I guess Kapanen for the moment. I'm just going to stream and giving back. Of course, Joe, it's so appreciated. Much love to you in the community. Much love back at you. So much love going around to everybody. And that's going to help towards the purchase of MLB The Show 24, which is coming very soon. Check for growth. Yes, exactly. When we exit this screen to look at that, that's the first thing. I'm, when we exit the screen, that's the first thing I want to look at. So I'll fix up the lines for sure. If you want Lucic, we, I'm going to do this off off screen later on. I'll fix up the lines so that our top guys are getting the top ice time. And in the NHL, so I prefer that our lines look something like this. Panarin, let's say... Um, but I didn't think everyone would grow. Yeah, I know. All right, doggy. We still have time. We still have a lot of time, doggy. Don't worry about it. So Hellenius is on the third line for sure with Stenberg and with uh, possibly Rubric. So Rubric at an 82 gets a plus one with Stenberg and Hellenius. McIntyre probably goes first line. Gets the plus five. That's Lindholm, McIntyre. Maybe this is the lineup. Perfetti maybe goes second line? Or, the, or would it... I don't want to break up Perfetti and McIntyre, but it would go plus five, plus five. We'll see in the preseason, but Lions potentially looking something like this. Uh, McIntyre continues to grow for the faceoffs at 85, so maybe he becomes center soon. Okay. The defense would be Hudson on the first pair with Guliev, probably. It's only a zero, though. It's only a zero. Ramirez with Romanov gets a plus two, and then Palika with Mugli gets a plus one. Lindholm Lysel, sorry. No Lindholm Lysel, so I think you've got it. Yeah. No, a donation will guarantee you a an entry into the draw for to have a created player. Unless it's something crazy, like a, like if you go on the PayPal and you give me like, I don't know, we're talking like maybe 50 plus, that's like a guaranteed lock for a player. Because it does take a lot of work. Plus, like the created players go to players goes to people who win our fantasy hockey leagues. That's like months of work. So I don't want to just give it for every $5 donation. As much as it's appreciated and used and so loved and thank and we're grateful for it, I can't give it a created player for every $5 donation or else it's not, it won't be as valuable. So Kosa Mikola, Svozel, Greaves, Hakila. What if we swap Romanov and Guliev? Like some, I don't know. I want Guliev to get that ice time. It would give a plus three to Romanov and uh, to, to Ramirez and Guliev. It would change from 0 3 one to 0 from 0 2 1 to 0 3 1. Keep that in mind. We'll see. We'll see. Switch Lindholm and McIntyre. We could. Just that he, uh, Lindholm has the better face offs at 86. But if we want McIntyre to grow in his face off attribute, that's true. And then here comes Doggy with that 999. Okay, good. Didn't want to miss this. No, also get rubric time over Perfetti. He isn't doing his part. Well, the thing is, Cole Perfetti is an 88 overall. This is a top six. As a first line forward, even. Rubric's an 82 listed as a third liner. So we'll keep Rubric on the third line for now, but it could be in the future that changes things. We need the, the Doggy wants that player. So Doggy, officially that's your first entry, but really I'm going to add a bunch of entries for all your previous donations as well. But since we've been keeping track the last couple of weeks, that's your first in there. Thank you, Doggy. That's going towards MLB The Show 24, which we'll have on Tuesday in just five days from now. So we're thinking that's probably the lineup. In the AHL, I'll figure it out. Um, Sposal 7th D, but I want Haikila, yeah, yeah, sorry, I want Haikila in here over Cunnin. I want Haikila in here. I love you, doggy, big love! 
Hykela, I put in my motion chip just for you. Yeah, good call there, Dice. And it gives it a plus one as well, which is great. I find a Seyev, Beck, and Hykela on that fourth line. Yeah, nationalities are good to go. So 5-5-1-1 five, five, one, one if the lines look like this. Custom players. And you know what? JP's given big as well before. I'm going to take it all into consideration. JP's given big in the past before. I'm going to find a way to make sure that all of the people who have donated, the, the Jumbo Joe... Uh, the Jumbo Joe Prodigies in the Discord server, the role that you get when you donate, those people will be automatically put into the draw for their previous donations as well. Uh, okay, so there's the lineup for now. Let's go back to setting the captains. So our captain is still here, but both our alternates are gone in Gerard and Pesci. So let's think realistic realistically now. McIntyre, definitely a big candidate. Kevin Fiala just signed an extension. Panarin, good veteran, but only here for one more year. Who's been, who are the only original Starfleet members left? Is it Lindholm and Roman? It could be, eh? Romanov for an A makes a lot of sense also to me. I think Romanov for an A makes a lot of sense. He's entering his sixth season with us now. For this young team, he's one of the few remaining guys who's been here the whole time. I think Romanov's got to get an A. Yep. Captain Lindholm. First alternate to Romanov. And I think the other alternate probably goes to McIntyre. Probably, if I think who's on this team in 15 years... The guy who is at the top of that list is Avery McIntyre. So I think McIntyre gets it. Realistically, McIntyre gets the A. Sorry for shouting. It's a long meeting table. <laughs> I know we're losing a lot of the originals now in, in year six. But yeah, McIntyre and Romanov. It kind of doesn't even... He's a healthy scratch most of the time, right? But he's a leadership guy in there. McIntyre and Romanov as the alternates. There you go. There you go. Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, to wrap up the episode, we have the captains, we have the idea of the lines. You can definitely leave a comment here on YouTube or on the Discord server with your thoughts on the lineup, what you want to see in the preseason, etc., etc. But we'll close out just by looking at the contracts. We want to see, did, our, did Ludwig grow? We want to see Ludwig. Ludwig, actually, let's, let's look at all players. No, his, he's been a good bottom six forward for us when we've needed him. If we let him go to free agency, he'd be assigned to a team doing the same thing. Ludwig is a 79 from 70. Oh, sorry, wait. I thought he was no, no. He was a. I thought he was a 78. So he stayed as a 79. Yeah, he's still a 79 overall. Ludwig is. So I think Ludwig probably stays overseas, even though he's a top six defenseman. Though it's a tough call. It is a tough call. We went out and we picked up Axel Sendin Palika, which which I think changes things. Oh, in real life, ah, uh, yeah, I hear you. Uh, I think I agree with you on that. Marshall's up from a 68 to a 70. Yes, good good catch there, Joshua. We'll let him marinate. Yeah, we'll let these guys marinate a little bit, and we'll get back to them. We'll let them marinate a little bit overseas. Erickson is playing in Liga, we said. Yeah. And Cam is playing in the National League. Good. Erickson. Good old Ludwig. Makes me think of Leon Botter. Anyone remember Leon Botter? Put a put a put an L in the chat if you remember Leon Botter. I'm just curious. I'll tell I'll tell you who who he was in a moment. Just put an L in the chat if you remember Big Leon. Oh man, what a throwback. Uh, okay, so any possible extensions? So we can't extend uh, Panarin yet. Cole Hudson, if he wants to extend, he's looking at big big money. So we could do a two year bridge on Cole Hudson. Bread and Botter, there you go. Big Leon, there you go. The bread and Botter pickles. Leon Botters, B A A D E R. Yeah, love it, love it. Too bad the chat's a little, a little lagged here. Not well, just the the playback's a little lagged. Uh, so we could go two years on Hudson. I think that's exactly what we'll do. Two years, eight million to keep him as an RFA is probably the best case scenario right now. So eight million, eighty five percent is six point eight. So we'll offer him two years. Probably, let's go two years, seven million, fourteen million dollars. We have 38 plus million. Let's go two years at 7 million. Keep him as an RFA. And we'll see if he signs next episode. But for now, we'll go two years, seven. It's too good of an opportunity to pass up. Two years, 7 million. And then he'll get his huge big boy contract, which will really hurt us in two years time when he's 24. But for now, we'll use his RFA years while we can. Cole Hudson, there you go. Perfetti, big Leon to the Data 72 Hall of Fame. Maybe, huh? I'm going to get him as a, as a nominee, perhaps. I don't know why Cole, uh, Perfetti thinks he deserves so much money. Like, he's good, and I love him, and I want him here long-term if he continues to produce, but why do you think you deserve eight years at $19 million? Uh, that's pretty much it, I guess. Uh, and for goalies, Kosa would need an extension, but we're not sure what's happening on Kosa just yet. We could go one year at, like, 2.5, but he'd be a UFA. I'd prefer to wait and see what he's going to become. Three years at 3.8. Okay, okay. 
we'll wait and see on them so nothing to really do too much for the extensions aside from cool hudson which we just did quick look at the trade blocks here in case anything piques your interest for trade deadline remember next episode a week from tonight will be the entire 2028 29 season unless there's some sort of big uh, emergency so getting in your thoughts now for the deadline or anything else is a good idea tommy novak he's still out there Novak, Provorov, Athanasiu, Hedman, Dano, Bastion, Patan. Interesting ideas here from the Anaheim Ducks. Coyotes, no one too much, not too much there. Same for the Bruins. The Bruins, did they end up keeping all their guys here? Are they buyers now? Okay, they good. They changed their mind. They changed their mind. Good. Uh, Buffalo. Data, you're one of my favorite YouTubers. Thank you for all the memories. Ah, Joshua, now you're going back memory lane with Leon Botter, huh? Joshua, big love, my friend. Thank you for such kind words. Thank you for the memories in the chat as well. But I'm glad that I can provide what I can. I'm glad these videos are here forever. Not to get big sentimental here for a moment, but I really look forward to the day that maybe, I don't know, if YouTube's around and the world's still here in 10, 15 years or whatever, maybe I can watch my franchise modes back with my kids one day. That would be great. I always keep it clean. It's always fun. Maybe we can laugh about a franchise mode and I can look, wow, remember that player? Now he's retired. His career blew up. His never turned up. You know, I can't wait for that. So thanks for the memories. Just a quick little sidetrack there, not to get emotional or anything. Kubalik, Uyghur, Strom, Granlund, Aho, Lindstrom, Mikola, all names here in Calgary. Kubalik definitely gets me on... Uh, uh, <laughs> well, it's too bad. You know what, JP? Of the PS4 chat, you could always see the chat on the screen. JP said, hello, future data's kids, but now everybody heard it. Hello to my future children as well. Um, it is March the, 20, the 14th, 2024. It will... Um, it will be the live chat will hopefully still be there, but on screen it won't be there anymore. The <laughs> so Kubelik, sorry, Kubelik, Kubelik, Kubelik. Um, forty six points last year, eh, seventy one the year before. How did the ice time change though? Uh, not, actually, you got more. That's crazy. He scored seventy one points playing sixteen and a half minutes per night. I do miss the on screen chat. I wish you could wish you could do it on um, on PlayStation Five. It's too bad, but people who are watching it back can always watch along with the live chat r scrolling beside it. Sorry, continuing. Carolina, nobody. Chicago, Lusterinen, Christian Fisher, eh. Colorado, eh. Columbus, Wierenski, there he is. They just got him. Chef Jeff, one year. Okay, here's a definitely an, a possibility. Caleb's going to love this. Chef Jeff with his five-star shooting, five-star puck skills. Negative six for Quinn Hughes. <laughs> Jeff Skinner, 63 points last year, but 90 the year before. He's definitely regressing, but he still has value. I would consider Jeff Skinner at the deadline for sure. Johnny Goudreau could even be something. Johnny Hockey, 46 points last year. Ouch. Ouch. Uh, Roman Yossi even, depth defenseman, 80 overall. Maybe. New franchise. I, I saw your comment, Joshua. I didn't get to reply to it yet. Uh, I couldn't give you an exact date just yet. I got to get the next franchise mode episode out. Hopefully sometime mid next week. About like oh, by this time next week it should be out. Yeah, Slim is gonna be there if we watch any PS4 series. My kids are gonna know. My kids will know. My children will be very aware of Slim Shady and just chillin'. Line two fit for Jeff. Did we see that? Uh, only two bars though. Jace Wakabayaki's gotta be my favorite moment. Oh yeah, big Jace Pac Man. Um, Waka Waka. So Bergeron on the block here. Uh, this guy Marquez, Miguel Marquez. Hi. Nate Danielson. Fortig Gendron. Gendron? Gendron? Fortig Gendron. Classic French Canadian name. And they'll know Darian Hatcher and everybody else. My children will know, they'll, hey, who's Hobbsy? Who's Old Man Sports? <laughs> who's this Mighty Joe? <laughs> Uh, there could be this guy, Drake, Moroza. As always, if there's someone who piques your interest, let me know. And I'll, in Discord or in YouTube, and I'll get you more information on them. Jake Evans, 85 overall. Yes, good catch there. Ekblad no longer on the block. So Florida figured it out. The moment Data realized Foligno scored the hat trick to win the cup. That's that legendary. Best moment in channel. That's a top five moment in channel history. When it was, we've, not only Foligno doing it, but us realizing that Foligno did it. No goals, all playoffs through 20 plus games. And then he scores a hat trick in game seven, including the game winning goal in overtime to win the Stanley Cup. Incredible. As the title of the episode says, the greatest story ever written or a greatest story ever, ever told. So Jake Evans as an 85 overall does interest me. 64 points last year. Whoa. Jake Evans. If only you could do that in the real world, that'd be great. Masha So is also interesting. So the Kings have a few interesting names for us here in the Hollywood division. Uh, Minnesota, Matico, Mat Mat Matico, Matico, 
Eric Smatico. Okay. Canadians, Ferraro. Just saying I've been here for a while, Data, but I wasn't commenting much. Ah, that's okay. I know you've been here for a bit. I hate you, EA. And Matt was on the bench. After you took the trip. You're getting a lot of good quotes out here, ARJ. Eh, Mateko? I think that might be it, eh? Mateko. Nothing much there from these teams. Jake Evans could be our guy. Could be right, JC. Marsha So could be a good bottom six guy as well. Latvian World Junior Championship Challenge Legend, Eric Smatico. <laughs> Speaking of the challenge challenges, I love my spot in our uh, PWHL challenge in the, in, the, in the Discord server. Ryan Strom, 85 overall. That's a big contract for a player with top nine potential at 35 years old. Yeesh. Um, yeah, just again, Jake Evans. I think he could definitely be a guy. Evans and Marsha So are two big ones that stand out to me. Um, just because someone of us picked him in a challenge. Also a possibility. A few older players. Eric Carlson, last year of his contract. Down to, or he has, it might be a new contract if, he got, if he's at 7.95. Or the game adjusted something, or I'm not sure what. Uh, Vushnevich, Middlestat, CC, Dumba, Kapanen, Foot, who won't be in the NHL anymore. Richie, Anderson, Dolan, Lowry, a lot of names here in St. Louis as well. Keep them in mind. And how is Casey Middlestad good? Is he as good as our Buffalo series? Data 72 Hall of Fame nominee Casey Middlestad? No, not really. But Bruchnevich is. Lightning have Barbashev, Duclair, Hegel, Rodriguez, Costine, all these guys on the block. A lot of good names in Tampa Bay. Toronto, Tavares, Hannafin, Liljegren, McCabe, Valamaki, Goudreau, Goudreau uh, Joseph, Comtois, Kopp, Trocek, Gambrel. Whew! A lot of names here in Toronto. Keep them in mind as well. Vancouver, not much. And who's this? This is Lieb. Okay. Uh, Vegas, Stevenson, Bunting, Olafson, Donato, Puglia Yarvi, Formenton, who won't even be here, Pitlick, and Boyd. All out there in the, um, in the, on the Vegas Golden Knights. Va Valine, Valen, Valine there on Washington. And Winnipeg, not much. Okay, so there's the trade blocks, ladies and gentlemen. We're past like two hours 15 now, so I think we'll go ahead and wrap it up. There are the trade blocks. There's our entire situation as a franchise headed into year number six, the 2028-29 regular season. So keep an eye out on Saturday for the next episode of our uh, Vancouver Canucks series. That'll be the 2029 draft and off season. So a couple of off seasons this week here in franchise mode. Um... That'll be Saturday. Next Tuesday in five days, we'll be live on MLB The Show 24. And next week, a week from tonight, next Thursday, we will be live for the regular season. Um... Oh, so you know what? I'm so sorry. The comments aren't coming in. I'm sorry, a few comments. I just missed a few of your comments here. My apologies. Um... Uh, da, 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 da. Cheating heel, where did Ovi sign? Let's check that out. Sorry, the, my uh, my screen stopped showing me comments. I thought people just weren't commenting for a couple minutes. But no, sorry, my com my computers were I have to look at them because the screen is not showing them to me. Ovechkin signed with the Dallas Stars. Uh, one year, 6.77 million, down to an 86 overall now. Ovechkin on Dallas. They are conservative buyers, so we'll see what happens with them longer term. We'll see what happens with that. Um, the hot cocoa from Papa, yeah. <laughs> Bedtime data, Bello. Need those eight plus hours? Yes, yes, it is. No context to the quotes, no order, just a book filled with data quote. Need a book of the data. <laughs> data book, and then everyone's quoting some famous data lines in the, in the chat there. The data 72, Hall of Misery. Bad clips planned. There's a top 10, on YouTube, there's a top 10 of 2BC clips. One of these days, I know I'm doing the Hall of Fame, but someone someday has to put together a top ten of clips from uh, from um, from episodes. So I'll wrap it there, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much for your viewership this evening, for the donations as well. We'll be live on Tuesday with MLB, next Thursday again with NHL, Vancouver coming out on Saturday, and maybe something else in between. We'll see what we can get until then. Uh, an early happy St. Patrick's Day to everyone. I love St. Patrick's Day. One of my favorite days of the year. Just want to throw it out there. A happy St. Patrick's to everybody. Wear some green. Eat something green. Enjoy the day. May the luck of the Irish be upon you as well. Cry all those tears out, Slim. That's a, that's a classic. All right, everybody. Have yourselves a wonderful end of the week and start to the weekend. I'll see you for the live stream on Tuesday. I'll see you in the Discord server. We'll talk soon. Live long and prosper. And let's get excited for the next generation headed into year number six in San Francisco. Good night, everybody. Enjoy. Stay well. Happy St. Patrick's Day. Talk to you soon.